Hello! Hey! Welcome to D&D Time Talks, where we discuss all things Dungeons & Dragons. I, as always, am Pete. I am always Jeremy. Uh, but there's more people <laughs> on the screen today, as you have oh, yeah. surmised by now. Uh, we also have uh, Kyle, a.k.a. Dangerous Bacon, Hello. joining us. That's me. Uh, and James, a.k.a. as Cardwatch, uh, is also here, uh, which uh, you Hello, may everybody. recognize... Uh, yes, uh, you may recognize their voices, at least. I haven't seen Daddy yet. Oh, he's Delph. adorable. <laughs> Data, say hello. You Data. love them. Well, there's, f there's five beings there's five here. Guests now. <laughs> there's five living beings on stream. He's kicking me in the chest. Sort of. All right, now stay right here. Never Data's seen. adorable. I have not seen a picture of Data yet. It was great. All right, he's just going to chill here on my desk while I pet him. Oh, hello, the Dan Miller and Max Meister and Bionic Shiva and Farful13 and no one else. No, I'm just kidding. Hello, Lord. Wow. Hello, hello to all, all others all the that, have, that have not yet spoken. Um, but yes, you likely recognize uh, the beautiful <clears throat> voices of Kyle and James from D&D uh, &D Time Delves, where they can be heard. But now you can, now you can see them as well. You can see Kyle's incredible mustache. It's true. Well, yeah. It's a pretty great mustache. Mm -hmm. yeah, suck it, David, James. Come say hi to everyone up here. Up here. We're, we're, we're starting right here, huh? Is that, that's how it's, that's how it's going, mean, Kyle. I mean, hey, man, the whole reason I have this is because Jesse bet that I couldn't do it. Yeah, see, right? That's uh, it's a lot of my life right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so uh, if you couldn't tell by the two guests, we're doing something a little bit different today here on D&D Time Talks. Uh, what we're going to be doing, uh, rather than, you know, normally we'll be kind of doing a lot of DMing advice, today we're just going to be talking about uh, games that we've run in the past, specifically one game that we all played in together uh, back when we were all going to school together, and one that has kind of gone down in history for us as kind of the legendary D&D campaign. I, I feel like when Legendary? Most people... Oh my goodness. Uh, Jeremy, you flatter me. You, you know it. You it, know is, it, is, it is the stuff of legends. Don't it you be coy with me. Don't be coy with me, Jeremy. You know it's true. Uh, oh, yeah. He's just cooperating so good right now. I've um, never, he's never cooperated this good before. He, he has all a, the attention. Um, yeah, he has um, the... He wants to live in the limelight. All right, all right I think mm -hmm. he's done now. All right, bye, buddy. <laughs> that was, that was yeah, enough. we're talking about the story of the Crucible. I'm very excited yeah. about this game. Um, All right, I've I've yeah. always been excited about this game. We've this been game. excited been about this game for like five years, and it's been it's over. More than five years. Oh no, no, it's just about five years. Yeah. Right. Wait. No, oh wait, no, no maybe it's, five years. It's about about five years. Yeah. Five, five, it feels like a long it time. Was five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it was five years ago. <laughs> See, we're gonna we're gonna have to dislodge all of our. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of jokes. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of jokes. Uh, a lot of so, jokes. do you guys mind if I it's if okay. I kind of lay out okay. the? But wait, the James, it's it's okay that we have a lot of inside jokes going on for this because we're gonna be spending a lot of time together. Yeah, ex oh. we're gonna be spending a lot. <laughs> Um, so before we talk about all of these inside jokes and before you uh, get into it, James, just a couple of things that we always say at the start here. Uh, if you have any kind of comments or discussions, please feel free to speak up in chat. I imagine there'll be less, you know, the questions I think today would be a little bit less oriented and, and maybe useful from a GMing point. But if you like want to ha have questions, like I guess in particularly for Jeremy in this instance, as he was the one that was kind of behind the steering wheel of this campaign the whole time about like why you made certain GM's choices and stuff. We can still also do that kind of D&D &D time toxic stuff uh, as well if that's something you guys want. But uh... And if and Farful13 in chat saying Fred Franks, exactly. If you have questions about Fred Franks, make sure to put them into the Ask Pete and Jeremy chat. It's going to be your only time to ask James actual direct questions about Fred Franks. Real, real time answers Most also. of which yeah. he'll, pro he'll probably avoid, but... Uh, you know, what also, are you talking also, about? Shiba, I have Shiba's... absolutely no shame about Fred's Franks. If I was still Shiba, working, working at that butcher correct. shop, I'd be like, ah, I can't answer any questions without my lawyer present. But Fred's <laughs> Franks is like getting on his business. But yeah, Sheba, you're absolutely right. But that's only for complaints. If it's anything else, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> at me. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Let's start our conversation here. So if, if you guys haven't picked up in chat, uh, just a little like, I think a little bit of, of lead in, right? This is a campaign that we ran while we were all in college. Uh, we all went to the 
I, 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 we redacted. all went to UMass. We all went to UMass. UMass oh, Amherst. Redacted. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we all kind of met. We, we all met through various so, whatever. Uh, the yeah, housing well, system. Lived, 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 yeah, it was housing. Yeah. It was housing shenanigans. It was great. And, uh, <laughs> it was a great time. Yeah. And then, well, no, we also have to say we met Kyle through through Matt. the fifth member for the fourth member of the party the, king, the mm-hmm. person who couldn't be here and he's yeah. he's very important because uh, i feel like, like matt pivotal character matt also. matt helped shape the campaign become what it was when jeremy said so do you guys have any family and matt was like yeah i have a wife before we get, a, <laughs> before we get ahead of ourselves. Ahead of hold on hold on that's that's still like guys we're so start, hard to pick a starting point start, this, well, right? no, 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 okay 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 so we all knew each other from school. Uh, in terms of playing D&D, the only people that had real experience at the time are James and myself. Uh, yeah. Pete was pretty much... <laughs> not, not me. I was a, I was a wee new. D&D babe. I'd played in one campaign. This was what, your second character? Um, it was my second character. Yep. Second, like, real character. Mm-hmm. I think you played a couple like West Marches, course. right, at the t- before that? Um, yeah, no, we had the we had the fourth edition campaign... And Pete, then let's not talk shit. about that. No, let's no, not talk the about West that. Marches came in. Well, no, no, Pete that. wasn't. Pete wasn't in the fourth edition campaign. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was Grant. This was my was second Grant. character ever. Um, and uh, Kyle, also, you were a noob to D anD. d And now look like at you playing third, Adventurers League. There's, there's like my third or fourth real character, maybe. Mm. So they yeah. were all wee babes, except for James. Hey, myself, been playing. Yeah, I've been playing since three point five. I grew up looking at my dad's old. Advanced D and D books. All right, I'm a legacy Dungeons and Dragons kid. All right, and um, well, going into and, this I, campaign, um, we found exactly ourselves right all in kind of the most enviable D and D position imaginable, where we all lived in the same location. We all had tons of free time. Yeah, uh, uh, we, we played this we, game every day for three months for a solid five hours, like actually playing, and then we spent maybe three or four more hours outside of the game talking about this game. Yeah. Uh, like, so we, we were this putting game in like a, a full-time job worth of this adventure. Indeed. Yeah. Man, I was double Fine. dipping full-time jobs. It was between this and Mario Kart. Yeah. <laughs> so much, um, so much those, Mario those Kart. Those were the so days. Mario were Kart. The days. Oh, don't forget but, backseat gaming Hearthstone. Oh. That was... Uh... But, uh, but before Anyways, we dive not about that. into it, there's one really important thing that I think we need to talk about here, and that is we did not play Dungeons & Dragons. This is true. This is not true. Yes, game. exactly. We didn't play D&D. This campaign was not a Dungeons & Dragons game. Uh, it also was not a Pathfinder game. It also was not a 4th edition game. This game was weird. Um, it was a kind of homebrew build-your-character as you go, uh, funky system that I was I was oper- running at the time. No, uh, Bessem is a bestrized version of this. Crowley, get out of here. Yeah, I don't even think it was very much like Bessem at this point. Besides the fact that it used two d six. Yeah, That's it was the... more. Uh, yeah, it was it was yeah. a real funky, real funky game. It was, um, it, was, it was. It was. I really liked that system a lot, actually. Yeah, whenever people kind of leveled up, right, wherever they got more. Uh, power right that was the kind of point where you could negotiate with me the dungeon master and you'd pick certain kinds of abilities you'd be good at and then how good you were to uh, define how much of a bonus you got to your d6 i guess it's kind of like the same idea as a lot of like final fantasy type games where you have a job and that kind of defines what your character can do yeah exactly so like kyle let's talk let's talk about characters before we jump in anything uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about. We characters. started in a town, which everyone starts in. A, actually, you start in a city. Uh, oh, yeah, we started city. in a town. We started yeah. in a suburb. If we're going to talk about uh, the first moment was, of the first session, like urban, we started in a tavern. Setting. Yeah, you started oh, in a true. tavern. The basement yeah. of a tavern. Was it in the basement that I start you in one? Oh, I think I yeah, think you meeting. immediately oh, walked meeting? us down into the basement. We started in a tavern, down into the basement. Yeah. So. The premise that I gave these guys, and what I like to do, we all sat down, we made our characters kind of, we made them all together, right, at that time? We did. Uh, we did kind yeah. of session yeah. zero yeah. Session, into session, zero. session one. So yep. the session zero came in, no one really, I don't think anyone had any idea of what I was going to run for the game at the time. Oh, well, I certainly and do not. <laughs> I, I told you guys, all right, so it's a sort of uh, dark ages medieval setting, and 
Um, there is magic. However, the people are kind of afraid of magic and it's under wraps. Uh, magical people are very powerful. Uh, there are like magically enhanced, well, they're not magically enhanced fighters, but there are like humans with superhuman sort of traits that are, are not magical, but like they're almost magical. Um, and all these people are part of an underground society and that's what you're a part of. And you have these kind of annual, these regular meetings and you do things like help to defend the cities kind of discreetly and do your various things. Uh, but mostly you watch out for yourself because the society's not really super into magic. And I think that's all I gave you guys, right? Uh, uh, there's the metal, almost no metal. Oh, yeah, right, which, very which I didn't get that memo before we started. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only one in the party who had you no idea. You didn't pay attention, was... Kyle. No, you Jeremy didn't... never fucking told me. He did, well, you were in the room. Yeah. No, 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 because he told he might... all you guys that before I, think... I got there. <laughs> Regardless, the, the big shtick that I gave was metal is very scarce in this world. And so... It does exist. It's very, it's highly sought after and prized, um, but it's very rare. Um, and yes. so I told you guys all this information, except Kyle didn't hear there was no metal, apparently. And I told you guys that you lived in a town and that you were happy living in this town. And you've lived in this town for, you know, your whole life. People don't travel, like, at all in this, um, for the most part, at least. There's not a lot of reason to. Yeah. Um, and so I asked each of you, to come up with an idea for your character and who they are, how you all know each other, that you're, and I gave them the scoop, the premise that they're all part of this kind of society, um, this magical people. What did I, I think I called you like uh, the Night remember. Watch or something. No, night Watch something that, was, better than no that. that was, it was exactly the Night's Watch. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think that, I don't remember why I did that. I might've just thought it sounded cool and I probably heard of it through Game of Thrones or some shit. I think it was actually pre-Game of Thrones, wasn't it? No, I mean, no, 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 not pre books but pre show. No, 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 no. That was second season of the show. Really? Was out when we yeah, started. Been going on for yeah, because third, we yeah. started watching season one at the end of freshman year. So I year. probably just jacked that straight from Game of Thrones because that sounded cool. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that was all I gave you guys, and I told you, do you have like family in this town? Do you have like friends? Yeah. Like, so what's your going what's your through? Shit? Um, we went through so, one at a time and started answering questions, people yeah. saying kind of what their careers were, you know, how they made a living, who their family and friends were. Uh, Kyle, do uh, you want to talk oh. about like, how you, your character, I think this so, is the time to talk about our character. So Jeremy, Jeremy posed the question to the group. Uh, so everyone kind of like pick a job, snap off the bat like Smith, I'm going to be a metal worker. And Jeremy in was the like, world with little metal. in the world with literally basically no metal. And I was like, well, I didn't know that, but I'm hard committed to it. So yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> Kyle makes yeah. a choice, and Kyle sticks to that choice. Oh, God pretty much. Damn it. Oh, let's not talk about let. Let's just wait until we get to the other oh, choices yeah. I made. Choices. Uh, and so Jeremy was like, "All right, cool. Uh, so what's a defining trait of your character? Can't read. Yeah, <laughs> all right. That's one of my favorite memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the can't read. I can't read. Can't read. <laughs> the first decision that he made about his character was that his character couldn't read. <laughs> yep, was completely illiterate. I was like, I'm a Smith. I don't need to fucking read. It's whatever. <laughs> uh, and so, and so that's how, so that it was began. The, that was the basis of Ulysses, <laughs> uh, uh, and that is Kyle's character, Ulysses. Yes. So yes, Ulysses, my, you you Ulysses determined Smith. just in brief when you first came up with Ulysses, you came up with just that you couldn't read and that you were a blacksmith, and that's all that you yeah. really thought about your character at the moment. I think uh, later I, you came up with a little bit more. Later, later during session zero, when we started answering more questions about our characters, like if we had a family or what, I decided, yeah, I had a wife and two kids. Mm -hmm. um, and you also, also decided that we had a kind of weird relationship. <sighs> yeah. Or was that with... did that evolve later? No, no, that that was pretty much from the from the get go. Where like, uh, I did not have a stellar relationship with my wife, <laughs> 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 it was to, to say the least. <laughs> Mm -hmm. My wife. My but wife. At that point in the campaign, you were a loyal husband to your wife. Yeah. A black oh, absolutely. <laughs> you, <laughs> let's, you, let's you foreshadow it. Yeah, that, that you, foreshadowing you, right there. All the foreshadowing. You make occasional huge income when you do your smithing, but otherwise, yeah. you just have a lot of not doing anything for a while, pretty which much, is pretty yeah. much optimal for you. Yeah, and you decided that means to, I get to train, to get, fill get that spare time with getting buff. So you, yeah. you picked the more fighty character. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, like the the idea of the ma- magically enhanced fighter was exactly my character. Mm-hmm. Like that, uh, it was great. Uh, I was pretty, was I was pretty game. into that. Uh, and then let's move to. I think what's interesting is we tried to figure out a way that all the characters could be tied together. And so from from yeah. Kyle, we actually tied to the our fourth player, the fifth. I'm sorry, our fifth player, the fourth player character in the game. Um, who his name was Hogar Earthenbrew. You can oh. guess by his name, Earthenbrew. He was a brewer, and he was the I believe what adopted father yeah, was, of you. He was my yeah. He was my father figure because he was like he was, I was the young, I was the youngest you character in, your... in this whole campaign. I was in my my late or like early twenties, early to mid twenties. Yeah, I yeah. it was like twenty five. Yeah, um, and effectively and so... like the the back we developed the backstory from there. It was like oh yeah, so I used to live in a village which no longer exists because it was destroyed by yetis. The only thing that I have left of my previous family is my father's hammer, which I still use to that day. And at that time, I beat to death a Yeti cub by myself. Because there I, you go. Magic, Yeti cubs we later magic. found out were pretty pitiful, but that's okay. <laughs> hey man, well, for a baby, for, for a, a baby, baby for, like a, for like a three or four year old, that's pretty fucking impressive, right? <laughs> Cut him some slack. No, um, I'm sorry. Sorry, also, also, that that one one off where we fought a shit ton of Yetis. Yetis are no joke. Oh yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk yeah. about Christmas. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the Christmas special. <laughs> the Christmas great. special. That was my that was my birthday was special. First? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was yeah, your birthday, birthday special. special. That was my yeah, birthday he's, where he's we almost special. all died. Uh, but um, <laughs> so, so Kyle Hogar Earthenbrew. Yeah, so Kyle was the yeah. adopted son of one of one of the adopted sons of Hogar Earth. Yeah. That player well, had made an, an outrageous extended family. There were a lot of a yeah, lot we, we of kept people. A, we kept a uh, Google Doc about all the characters that we had. He had he had two sons and two sons, a daughter. The, yeah, oh right, of course, I forgot about Rose. Jeez. Can't forget about Rose. Rose a is wife. super important. Uh, one of the sons married, and then they had kids. They had his kid. Yep. So oh, he had yeah. like a whole oh, big Brutus, family Brutus had a kid. And they all, I believe, lived in the same household. No, Brutus and Oh, Patricia, no, Brutus had no. moved out at that point. Yep. Yeah. It was, it was not Patricia. <laughs> yeah. It was Bruce yeah, she did. That's, that's exactly it. Was it Patricia? It was Patricia. It was or Patricia, that, what, yeah. was, what was Hogar's wife's name? Ho- um, Hogar's wife was. Uh... Oh, jeez. I thought it was Patricia. I thought Patricia no. was Hogar's wife. No, no, no. That's no, definitely Brutus's wife. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So. They he made the distinct choice at Sarah. that point during character creation. Yeah, You're it right. was. That, it was uh, Sarah. Yeah. That one of one of the sons, the older one, uh, who was kind of touted as being like kind of a baller, lived on the other side of town. We later found out just how much of a baller this character was. He but, carried this entire campaign. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing is Brewer, really cool, you know, ties to the tavern, popular character in town. And that tied into both Pete and James' characters. Which one of you guys want to talk about your eyes? Um, James, go ahead. All right. So, you see, I bear a little bit of shame about my character here because <laughs> I didn't understand just how how this game would take over my life and how important it how, would be. How, love, how loving you would be, how much you right? would care. So, so, my character started off as pretty much a weed joke. I, my character's <laughs> name was Indica Reefer. Okay, uh, and he was the oh. town apothecary. He was just uh, he was a loner. Uh, he was a quiet guy, mostly kept to himself. Uh, his the love of his life had perished in a fire when he was a teenager. They were engaged to be married. Uh, the love of his life, of course, was Mary Jane. Uh, really, I just uh, I I picked that point to to scream like '90s animated Spider-Man and say Mary Jane. And, uh, and our response, obviously, was, it was 20 years ago! Oh, yeah, no, my character had some serious PTSD <laughs> about fire. Uh, and really, he was, a, he was a druid. He could make things grow. Like, uh, one of the first things I did was ask a tree to fall over on some bandits, and it did. That was real nice. Uh, one of the yeah. things that oh. was super cool about your character is, you know, the, char- the person, their tie-in to everyone else was that, your dead fiance was yeah. the sister of Hogar. Yeah, it was the like, sister of Hogar's so, wife, right? Sarah Jane Tolson and Mary loss. Jane Tolson, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They had this this really like tight law, uh, this 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 shared loss that um brought your characters together in like a cool way that I highly recommend trying to come up with something like that I think is a really great tie-in because both the characters are emotionally invested, right, in being friends. 
that yeah, yeah. right and being close i was creepy uncle lindy to his kids <laughs> Oh, They're like, boy, yeah. don't, uh, don't ever, don't, don't go into Uncle Indy's shop while while nobody's there. Okay, just don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> and Pete, you were also tied in with the Earth. And yes, Earth. Um, I also had kind of built my character tied into Hogar's, uh, who's kind of our our rock in this party in many right. ways. Um, but uh, yeah, I was I was a little bit more of um, I, I was kind of the odd one out to begin with, um, where. I wanted to play this kind of manipulatey sort of, you know, arcane uh, mind mage uh, kind of character. Uh, so the first thing I asked Jeremy was if there was some kind of, you know, leader in town. And I asked to start out as, you know, an advisor to, um, you know, an advisor to the local town noble who was named, uh, I believe, uh, jokingly named Baron Nashor, as again, some of the names were taken. Of uh, <laughs> some of yeah. these names were taken uh, less seriously at the beginning of the campaign. Uh, yep. But... And maybe yeah. even moving on to the end of the campaign, but that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll talk love... about that. Yes. Um, <laughs> Zep, Zep Lion. Zep Lion. Uh, but... <laughs> I love Zep Lion, though! Oh, Zep Lion anyway, sorry, Pete, go ahead. Yes, yes. Um, so I was playing this kind of, you know, local aristocrat that was just kind of living a, a relatively high society life and very content in that life to just kind of, you know, abuse his power and while away his time. And one of the things I would do to abuse my power, uh, we agreed that I kind of grew up with Hogar. Uh, and when his uh, his ability set was elemental magics, you know, lightnings and fires and things like that. Uh, so when, you know, he would blow things up in his house, I would kind of cover for him and just kind of, you know, make the documents and kind of the police, the guard reports and things like that, you know, disappear and, and run things under the table uh, so that he could, you know, function as a brewery and, you know, keep his magic under wraps. Well, like the fire that killed Mary Jane. Like the fire, uh, that, killed like the fire well, that killed Mary Jane. You see, Hogar <laughs> didn't light the fire that killed Mary Jane, all right? He just he was wasn't around. Right. He was off in the woods with with sarah and so i he wasn't there to save her okay mm -hmm. that's that's the thing oh and my character's name was uh Grigor grigorovich von wolfenstein was his full name which was like kind of the this count. uh yes the count grigorovich von wolfenstein uh, one of the things in the lore of that world was that count wasn't actually a real title it was just a thing that i had made up to call myself because i wanted a title uh similarly like my character's actual name in the backstory was just gregory wolf but he kind of flowered up his name to like build this kind of pompous uh noble personality for himself because he grew up poor in the dirt exactly grew up with nothing and used your mind powers to wiggle your way weasel your way to the top Indeed. And of course, very, very grim a worm tongue to start yeah well <laughs> hmm yeah, very, that was very much what I was to going start. for at the beginning was Grimma Wormton. So we're already like an hour in, so let's act. Oh, we're actually like half an hour in. <laughs> yeah. So let's actually God, really? let's, let's start the campaign. The campaign begins. <clears throat> you guys start in a tavern. Uh, it's a tavern that you all hang up in the whole time. And I, as a dungeon master, immediately knew what the starting action was going to be for this campaign. Um, I had actually already ran a similar starting action for a very different campaign. Uh, in the past, or not campaign, but one shot that didn't become a campaign. But so you guys were in this setting. You all knew that magic is kind of, mm, <laughs> but it's like, rally. but people are okay with it. Uh, the barkeeper Hank, uh, who you guys knew and loved, um, served you drinks. It was fine, uh, and you guys went downstairs to have your secret meeting. And I believe during this meeting, shit went wrong. Was I yeah, correct? That it's called Hank well, set the fucking bar on fire. Well, no. First, this, first no, the first the Duke uh, flew into the basement, warning oh, us all right. something bad was going to happen. Get your get your families get out of here. No, wait, 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 who's the Duke? Yeah, he was some guy. Duke is just some guy in a cloak that like came down and told us all of this stuff and we're like why should we trust you at all he's like well it's already happened to another town it's gonna happen to yours so listen to me or die whatever bye and so we didn't listen no we we listened um, well, we, we were we didn't fully <laughs> James, listen. like we we didn't, guys, we didn't guys, guys, deviate guys, guys. he's trying to get a word in if, if i may correct this timeline um we were sitting in the bar and this guy came in uh, and it was obvious that Hank recognized him, the barkeep. And so the first action of this campaign was Hank kicking everyone out of the bar, uh, and then Jeremy making the statement, this is the first time Hank has ever closed the bar in the history of the time that you've been working there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then mm -hmm. as another very cool DM thing that Jeremy did at this point, and props to you, something I did not recognize at the time, uh, immediately sowing suspicion of a character that would go on to become a villain here uh, in Hank for spoilers to a degree. Um, he didn't say, now, Hank. That, now that you think about it, you're not sure if you've ever even seen Hank leave the bar. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was um, almost yeah. like a joke at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it was a second thing that I said in the campaign. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, yeah. fucking Hank. Um, so we left the bar and then, you know, started to do some investigating and eventually mm -hmm. um, caught this yellow cloaked figure outside. Um, you know, Thank God Pete remembers it so well. Yes, right? I, I always remember things. Uh, we ended up catching this figure <laughs> outside uh, and he kind of told us some of the information that they were talking about before. Um, and he was badly beaten in, like his face was beaten up by Hank. Uh, who didn't want him to spread this information, apparently. Uh, so we're still kind of, you know, connecting dots and don't fully understand. Um, but apparently um, they find out that they're going to blow up the meeting center uh, that we use for the Night's Watch and kind of kill and eradicate all of the mages in this town in one swoop. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess at that point then we, we had a Light. decision to make. You started gathering your families, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah, yes. We had a decision to make. So you had go, to... go to the meeting, try and save everyone. Or try and save our own save our own lives, which was, it our was easy for most of you. But you had to cross town to get Brutus and his family. We because... did, and we did it. We did it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it yeah, was it important. Was, Thank goodness we important. did. And uh, God, could you imagine if Brutus died. Then? So you oh, wasted shit. a ton of time getting Brutus, and then I believe as night fell, that's when shit started to hit the fan, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah the explosion I, started, and uh, we tr we had to book streets. it out of town, and. Uh, and mm -hmm. we and no, I remember wait, one thing in particular. I'm sorry, go ahead, finish your statement first. Yeah, no, and and then like the horses were too tired to carry everyone in the carts, so Brutus had to get out and start uh, pulling hey, alongside hey, the horses. The hey, first I helped. time I Brutus helped. was a boss. And you, yeah, and I Ulysses too. Right. And those two guys are in the front of the cart. The first <laughs> rolls, like great. the first he real rolls of the great. campaign, right, was finding out that Brutus was like as strong as a guy. horse, easily. He, he, man was nice man was five horsepower, pulling the cart along. Uh, well, he was just favored by the gods, as he only didn't roll below like a ten on two d six. Yeah. yeah. On two D six, this man. So that's what I loved about the two D six system is the is the parabolic curve aspect of it. Unlike a D twenty, which is you know you crit fail on a one, you crit succeed on a twenty. You have like well, I mean it's a one in one in twenty chance, whatever. But the one in thirty six on either end with the with sevens happening like middle it's of the crazy. road happening more often than not, then it really makes magical crits magical, and that was Brutus. So. One of the things that I remember is I think I told you guys about a couple of NPCs in the town that you knew of that, yeah. like, you might have been friends with from the meetings. And one of them and was the them. toy maker. And so none of oh, you went to yeah. visit the toy maker. Mm. You it, explicitly you opted to all go and save Brutus and get everyone together yeah. and get extra supplies instead of visiting the toy maker. I remember this super vividly. Did I ever tell you guys what the toy no. make the big thing was? Yeah, you did. He was a Geppetto remember. type figure who was yeah. making a doll as a son and he, he, had, he life he magic had little, it somewhat to life. Son. Exactly. Yeah. Cause he was he was the toy maker slash like town surgeon or something. Town doctor, Dr. Merriweather. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus, Jesus Christ, Pete, you're on point. On I know I, re that. I remember things. Uh, yeah, and that, the, that, the poor poor remember. that poor doll boy. That poor doll boy. the next <laughs> thing doctor. I remember is We've now established a situation where all of us were forced to flee from a place mm -hmm. that we were told immediately, this is our home and the only place we've pretty much ever known. Uh, and yeah. now we know that we're being hunted because we have these magical abilities. Uh, that's one of the things that the, the, the Duke, who was actually called the, the Duck for some reason. Uh, oh, no, because we used Psyduck yeah. as his character piece. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he was wore a yellow it. cloak. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and he wore a yellow cloak because of the Psyduck character piece that I had. Uh, so doubt it. Layers. We, uh, we uh, continued onward uh, and just were just kind of running. We didn't know much about the towns that were away from us, and we came to a divergent fork in a road uh, where Jeremy was like, "All right, there's kind of a uh, the well-worn path leading to another town, or you can go down this less well-worn path leading to." Um, there Some was place. like. I know. I think we had a general idea. I think we were told, like, you know, that there was like plans for a town here. You don't know, like, how it, 
you know, it never really right. took off. Oh, uh, um, kicker that we should throw in on here, Jeremy did have a map of this entire region, which yes. is how we decided where we were going to go and how we knew that there was maybe a town being built over there, and but already knew that there was an established one down that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so we made a choice to go to this, you know, relatively unknown place because we're trying to fall off the grid right now because we're fueled being hunted. Uh, we have a random encounter with a troll. Uh, I, really I the first one was bandits, yeah, you, right? The, well, no, 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 the, no, 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 it was the, the troll, it was the troll, the troll. and then the bandits. So right, because I got fucked up by that troll. Oh, it's that was how I got the title Ulysses Gets Beat About the Head, Smith. <laughs> yeah, that's Four the start. Four player bit. characters, and they're like entourage of what, 16 to 20 family members? So, well, well, no, 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 no. All right, so, we had... So my family had... was four. Five. Family was five. No, four. It was five, right? Because it was Brutus' wife, Matt's wife, my and then family. Matt's other two kids. Matt's family was five, yep. and then Kyle had... Yeah, you had... Including myself was four. Including yourself. It was just... Eight. Still a lot. Still, Still a lot of people. Yes. It's like 12. It's like we were Pete and I didn't have extended than... family. Our extended family was these people. My my mom and my mom was dead and I didn't know my dad. <laughs> uh, so, my parents had died a long time ago. All my family yeah. was basically there. What happened when you fought the troll? Because I remember, not... Kyle, you got bludgeoned about the head repeatedly by a troll. I did. Um, I did a lot I, because I I had to go up and tank it because no one else could, and then I got I almost died twice. I tried to restrain it with grass and vines. And at this point, I think Pete, you only really had psionic magic. So what did you even do? Uh, this was the most damage I ever took in the whole campaign. Uh, the troll picked me up, and then I screamed at him in psionic magic to put me down. Uh, and uh, that was <laughs> that one time where I was being grappled by a troll was the worst it ever got for Count Gregorovich von Wolfenstein. It sure was. <laughs> was it really the Mas worst? Master yeah, of probably, 4D yeah. chess. I mean, I was in more dangerous situations, but, but that's I the never... most damage you took. Yeah, I was yeah. grappled at that one point. <laughs> so they, they defeat the troll. I think you scared it off, didn't you? Uh, you didn't actually kill no, it. No, we... Because we it kept regenerating. Maimed it. We maimed it a little bit. I think we siphoned some of its blood off. Oh, um, I'll also no, note oh, we took some of the meat. on it, I think, right? No, 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 no. That's how we well, get Lao. Did, did I also, did I I also fall a tree on the up. on the troll? Oh, I think Matt's fire also scared it off, because he was yeah. oh, right, fireball. Matt, Matt had, like, fire. So anyway, yeah. the troll Elemental leaves. Shit. The troll leaves. Uh, yeah. Or they defeated or scared off or something. They it continue traveling. And this is, I think it was a nighttime encounter, right? You guys are getting ready for camp, and you were ambushed by bandits who immediately took... Uh, some of the women in the party hostage because they were they were making camp and getting stuff ready while you guys were out like chopping wood and such. Yeah, and yeah well, except this me because I I was bludgeoned about the head. Uh, this yeah. was yeah, <laughs> this was like same day, right? Yeah, same pretty day. much. Um, this was we, on the we made camp. Uh, it may, it may we made camp and, and we woke up in the morning with a knife to some people's throat. Yeah, so, one of which was Matt's wife. This yeah. is a really exciting part of the campaign because this was the point where y'all just went there was no like oh god maybe we should like not because you didn't no. know you just all just attacked yep. just immediately like no we're gonna kill him yeah no they uh, threatened our family right our family. like crit with a fire blast right and immolated yep. one of them yeah first um, yep. first thing right can off I, the bat can, can i say my cool line that i said at this time where i looked at one of the bandits who would be later become an important character of sorts <laughs> <laughs> and i said Ooh. to him you're going to regret this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. That was exactly it. Um, and then and... Matt blew another bandit's head off. Uh, yeah. I punt, me and Brutus Melted punched one to death. Yep. And then I dropped a tree on that guy, Pete warned, and I severely concussed him, right? And this guy was put out of commission. Like, he was, like, vegetable catatonic state. And that's where Pete says one of the coolest things to Jeremy about this being like, so I'm a mind mage and I can mess with people's minds. So you're telling me he has like no mind left? Jeremy's like, yeah, no, you, you, you see in there and it's, it's like static. It's like white noise. Pete's like, can I kind of put a structure in there and kind of, you know, <laughs> hey, make him like my... This exactly? Um, pretty much. Um... <laughs> Jesus Christ, wow. Yeah, what... Uh... It was pretty accurate. Um, yeah, James did a James did a pretty good job of, of summing it up there. Um, essentially, what I did is I, I wanted to, since he was no longer able to think himself, start 
making his brain do the things that his body would do and just kind of move him around like a puppet. But instead of strings, I'm just in his brain. And I think that was just a really lucky... I think you are like an 11 or maybe... Yeah, I rolled 12. very well. You rolled very, yeah. very well. Yeah. Uh, and so began the story of a character, the only sound this character could make was... Um, wow. it, it was it was Lao, uh, which wow. uh, was that a, uh, wow. the name originally came from uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. There was a place called Lake yeah. Lao Guy, uh, yep. where I was watching that, and people got mind controlled and brainwashed there. So I called him Lao, and the Jeremy's like, "Yeah, that's the only noise that he can make is that." And there uh, you just, go. And that was kind of basically half of my class from that on is this individual named Lao. Wow, yeah. defender of the meek, slayer of evil, caller of storms, uh, slayer of demons, uh, champion, champion of, of the people, people. Champion chosen of the, of the gods. Chosen where the I gods. think yeah. were all of his accolades by the time you all finished. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's mind let's not forget. Let's. I guess let's jumping ahead a little bit. Is like what? What did we make Lao look like, Pete? <laughs> um, Lao. Uh, I was also allowed to use illusions. Uh, that was kind of my two things: is I could mess with people's brains and I could do illusions. So I put an illusion on him to, uh, because when we were walking into town for the first time, I realized this dude was like beaten and bloodied and was like drooling because he couldn't think. Uh, so it I basically just... looked like he had a stroke. Yeah, he did not look good, uh, and I made him look essentially like Jamie Lannister to cover things up. I gave him long, <laughs> flowing golden hair, uh, illusion to beautiful, like, bright, gleaming plate armor on yep. his body in a world with no metal. Uh, so, uh, yeah. That, I took credit for making. That was Lau, Commander Lau. Yeah. Oh, and he man. became so, kind I, of like our figurehead to the people who'd be like, oh, who is this man that you people are traveling with? Oh, and we're so like, stoic. oh, that's Lau. He's a, yeah, he's a very stoic man. The, the general. He, he does he the does right thing. Speak. Uh, he Fast speak forward too. a little bit. You guys get to this small town that apparently had started up. It's very small at the time. Uh, and the town, I believe, was Carrot. just called Carrot because mm -hmm. it was originally yep. founded as a mining town. Yeah, uh, Carrot obviously, with a K. at that point, was, yeah, Carrot with a K. And I believe you came in in the middle of like a festival of some kind was going on. Uh, yeah, it was yes. the festival right before the, the Shadow Spawn attacked. Yeah. Um, well, the Shadow Spawn we knew had been attacking. Um, yeah. Because we went into the town, they told us basically we could live there. We started building houses. Um, and we found out about this problem of these weird shadow things um, that were attacking. And I don't from, remember. From like the mountain where the mine used yeah, to be? From, yeah, from the old. The forest. Uh, yeah. yeah. Basically. There was they kind of a weird structure more. in the forest, which we hadn't gotten to yet. Um, and this was, in my opinion, my crowning achievement in the game was this natural was this natural 12. Uh, this was, I think, the most important role uh, of the game. And, you know, uh, inflated ego and that whatnot. But oof, I went around town and asked to, like, rouse a militia to uh, help battle these shadow creatures. And I rolled, a, you know, the natural 12. And I got, like, 12 people from it. Yeah. Uh, and then we had a little had army. army. Yeah, no, Pete. Your your best natural twelve was the last natural twelve. I don't know if we'll get there we'll, tonight, we'll get, but we will absolutely. I'm gonna. I mean, I'm willing to. There's so I'm much. Down, like we're, we're in the game, first but... two days already, Jeremy. There's months. We of can this. fast forward a little bit no, more. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I guess this is kind of like important. Oh yeah. You, th sorry. They were traveling like, for like three weeks. Yeah. It, it was not a short walk, especially with their number of people. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're in Carrot. They are at this like little festival that was happening. I don't remember what the festival was for. I think it was like a fall harvest kind of festival yeah, thing. Yeah, because it was getting... And I think that yeah, was one it, of it your... It didn't even feel like a festival, though. It, was, well, it felt very, like... That was one of your thoughts, though, in going to the North Path, because it was getting toward winter, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, no one's going to come up there. Well, it's also, you needed to get somewhere fast. You yeah. couldn't, because mm. you knew oh, yeah, the nearest town to the, the coast, west Jesus. was very far. Yeah. yeah. And so, it was the possibility of snow. Like people yeah. saying, they roused a bit of a militia together, got some folks ready, and they go into the woods. During the festival, the uh, shadow monsters attacked and dragged a couple people away. And so that's why they got this party. So they go into the woods, and Lau is kind of leading the way, because Pete's just like, yeah, I'll send him first. Because yeah. at this point, <laughs> Lau is still a brain He's dead. expendable. <laughs> he can't do anything. Yeah. But looks it perfect. Is uh, you travel into like the dark, spooky forest. You came across a gargantuan, just big boulder in the middle of the forest. I think. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And for yep. some reason, you guys knew that was the place. Maybe I, one of some of the townspeople like 
Maybe. knew of it from like folklore or something. There might have been just some context of just your your DMing that kind of implied mm -hmm. like you know that this is where you are. Like there's something a little bit off about yeah, it. Yeah, this, this is the place you yeah. need to go. There's something spooky about it. Yeah, now, I think I think other son had been out there, right? Oh, Sterling. Yeah. Ah, oh, there it is, Sterling. Yeah. This is the first time we've mentioned Sterling. And Sterling. So talk yeah. I just want to talk a teeny bit about the children for a second because oh, Kyle, boy. all uh, for the people who had children, <sighs> Kyle's character and Hogar, they oh, all decided that their children <laughs> were also gifted, except for one of them. Yeah. So of well, Matt, of, of Hogar's, Josh? of Hogar's three. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have to talk about Josh. Of Hogar's three <laughs> children. Josh is the worst. Uh, there was Brutus, who was super magically strong. Uh, there was Rose, who's a very young girl who had we gifts didn't know what her powers were, but you yeah people didn't know that. Um, they it was unsure, but we knew she was yeah. magically. Well, we didn't know that till like halfway through uh, the campaign. Yeah, that yeah. was given to me to play with. Matt basically, just give me a gave me a free open book for that. And um, the other one was Sterling, who was a a mage, kind of like Hogar, kind of, an yeah, element. Yeah, except mage. he was he was but lightning he was based. Cannon. Yeah, he was. Yeah. A, he was. He, he was like control control more powerful, no control, classic archetype. Yeah, yeah. sorcerer, yeah. basic versus wizard. Yes, the, very um, much the sorcerer. Fuck! Did you guys meet Shoutai? Is that how you knew about the force? Shoutai Jin? No, um, he wasn't there yet. No, he. We. That was the first person we met when we went into town. But um, yeah, but he didn't. We'll talk about didn't have anything to do with the forest. Yeah. Shoutai is very yeah. important to my character specifically. So y'all go into the woods. You search around this huge boulder. I think you find a secret wait, door. Wait, wait, wait. Because... Hang on. We didn't talk about my children. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Kyle. Your two children. Yes, your two had... children. Two children. I'm sorry. Two children. Ulysses' two children. Yes. Uh, yeah. No. So there was Xander, uh, who was the younger of the two, but was very gifted at just all kinds of magic. It, it didn't matter what it was. He could put his mind to it. Like if he could read anything about it, he could do it. Well, I, thought, I thought I thought Xander was just really intelligent, but not a ma yeah. magic user. No, no, Xander because Xander, because eventually no, he definitely he couldn't do magic. Yeah, magic. because eventually he oh, learned how right. to make right. he learned he how to do learned, scrolls. He, he learned how to make scrolls. You're right. He was right. Kind and, of then, the and then there was Josh. Josh was a jock. Josh, yeah, Josh was like the the town the town cool kid, you know, one he was a, a sports boy. star and whatnot. Yeah, he was he was a, a grade A fuck boy. But he was not gifted magically at all. At all. Not magically all. strong. Nope. Not anything. Kyle Couldn't made the decision that this, shit. he was. He I was, was upset by it. A regular human. And, oh right, yeah, because Ulysses was always disappointed in that. <laughs> yeah, Ulysses was always super disappointed in Josh, even though he'd like never directly say it, but you could one hundred percent tell. <laughs> yeah, so back you, a bad good. father. <laughs> back Some to the would rock. say. Some would say. You all find a way into the rock. You find like some ancient uh I think it was like a like a there was like a ladder thing. Yeah. There's a ladder uh, down into the rock. And um, you found that the shadowed monsters weren't just monsters, right? They were kind of like humans almost demons. that were sacrificing people. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah, um, something like that. They were they, trying they to were like kind open of, um, a portal thing. Yeah, there was, yeah, like, there was that demonic. black portal that was the the shadow things were coming out of. Yeah. Yep. Uh and we'd found like this magic weapon. Um that was kind of like this glaive thing that we just gave to Lau because he was standing in the front. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, yeah we, we went down into oh, the, the glaive, the magical glaive. Oh <laughs> yeah, is... we went down into this shadowy basement. You know, there was a couple of like minor encounters. It was you know dungeon crawly. Uh, but then yeah. we moved into the space that was kind of the, you know, this was the location the that we were looking chamber. for. Yes, yeah. uh, and there was this big kind of swirling portal. Uh, we have all of these soldiers that we'd recruited and brought into this place with us, uh, and. <laughs> With their bone swords, because no one has metal. Yep. yep. Yeah, sharpened Spears, bones. rather. I think, like, uh, the we only metal we, kind of, we had um, was my hammer. Hmm. Uh, we go in and we kind of begin what is going to be, like, the final encounter of this, you know, dungeon crawl and, you know, destroy whatever is here is the goal. Uh, Jeremy, you want to talk about what kind of happened there? Um, you see, the exact specifics of it kind of evade me. I remember it was a very, very tight battle. It was very back and forth. It was, um, uh, and I, I mean, think, that was also due to, like, the space. Yeah, there ended because up being the, a the point where you guys were on the brink of, like, death, right? Oh, I can, yeah. Where, um, this is where Lau got his titles. Yeah, well, yeah, it, sure it was is. this, so a couple things happened. There was fighting going on outside of this room, and fighting going on inside. Inside the room were the player characters and Lau. And some of the, oh, uh, and some of the, a couple of some the of the I think Tanner yeah. was in there. Yeah, Tanner, the Tanner in town. Tanner, uh, and there were a handful oh, yeah. of of NPCs outside, and 
I think what ended up happening is um, there was like a big, there's a hole in the top of this room where the light could shine down uh, from the moon and everything above. <laughs> and what ended up happening was a, this big battle started unfolding. It was super tight. Brutus was having a rough time even. And Brutus had been established as a pretty tough character. Some of the pl- yeah. uh, NPC guards that they had got on to join them died. Um, oh. so, and you guys were in tight shit. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you were out of magic. You were out uh, of points. Of they power. had this kind of ability that seemed to be something akin to hold person, but the way it was described to us was, you know, basically when one of the shadow monsters touched someone, they would just kind of go catatonic and, and start kind of shaking and couldn't move anymore. Yeah. Uh, and at one point, Lau goes over and touches one of these individuals and that affects transfers onto Lau, but Lau is an illusion so you can't tell that he's gone catatonic uh, so he walks over to this individual and essentially just cures him with a touch and this person's able to stand again, even though it affected him, he couldn't see it because he was an illusion so he gained, uh, he became known as the healer of the sick uh, for the <laughs> later on in that battle oh, uh, there's a big shadowy monster and I think you guys were, you were all out of magic because you had a number of points, like spell slots, that you could use to cast your magic at that time. And yeah. I think everyone was out of well, points. No, I think, I think, I think you I were fucking some. dead, Kyle. You were oh, yeah. I think, I, think I still had some, but that's just because of the way that my magic worked. Yeah, it was like, weird. Yeah, you were beat have, about the head. I, I was probably beat about the head, if I had to guess, as I was wont to do in this campaign. And in this, like, incredibly dire moment, it was... Pete's command to Lau to use the glaive that they had found early on uh, to attack, because I think he had found it in the ritual yep, area. Sure yeah. uh, and it caused it to glow with light because it was a magic glaive designed to fight these monsters. Uh, and Lau got the killing blow on the demon uh, in front of all of the shadow creatures, yep. uh, in front of all of the guards, uh, giving him the title Slayer of Demons. Yep. Yep. Meanwhile, outside, the battle's going really bad as the other monsters are messing up the townspeople. And one of them gets to Sterling, the kind of loose cannon mage. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of impulsively, he goes to cast some of his magic to defend himself. Um, and whenever he did that, I'd make a roll to see how well he could control his magic. And he crit failed on it. Uh, and so the entire place just started getting bombarded with lightning uh, from a storm that Hogar had already brewed above. So at this yeah. point, there's lightning crashing down from the sky. Uh, people are just dying. I uh, think the duck, the, the duck died from a lightning yep. strike. Yeah, the duck was struck by lightning and died. Uh, unfortunate roll. A couple of the townspeople died. Yeah. But you guys managed to make a uh, beat a quick escape with Lao. Yeah. Uh, and the people I have now it, seen La- Lao uh, call. Sto- Brutus died. almost died. Oh yeah. Brutus almost died. Uh, and one you of the big carry carry about, only time. Think, right, Kyle. That hold effect was pretty brutal on him. Um, the big so, kind of lightning storm came down and struck at the um, the, portal the portal from which these demons were coming through, uh, which yeah. destroyed it. Yeah. Yeah, Matt eventually got Sterling to be like, channel it! Use the power! And then just, uh, yeah. I, I just have this... I, this vision of this kid standing at the top of the, you know, there was like a hole that went down into the ground. There was a spiral staircase that at the very bottom was the portal. And I just like have this image of like, if you played Fire Emblem, you know, uh, Ewan, the apprentice mage, that's how I always thought of yeah. Sterling was, was this I like. I think eyes glowing, just, ah, yeah, you know, just everything's one, fine. two, three, as the lightning just slams into the portal, and then all that was left of it was like little wisps of shadow, mm. and we were like, well, we never have to deal with that again, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never went back to finish that job. Anyway, that's yeah. fine. You nope. dealt with it for then. You guys all made a, beat, a quick escape, uh, and in the end, no one super important was killed. A couple of the townspeople died. Yeah, but they, and... all, they were all no names. And yeah, they were and, all and the super, died. super excited because only a few townspeople died in a mm-hmm. shadow demon incursion. All right. Yeah. Imagine ho- ungodly horrors attack your town and like five people die. That's that's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. Well, like... and the biggest thing to that is when the summer came, they'd be able to travel through the forest to reopen the mine that they were made that they yep. kind of settled the place for. Yeah. Um, where there allegedly was metal. <laughs> so there was. I think but we didn't find that that's when we later. have our first like real downtime, right? You guys spend a lot yeah. of time we, now. We spent like um, actual in-game months just like building up our residence. Yes, we, and, like, we build homes. Part of the town. 
Um, we go on a couple of adventures um, to surrounding towns uh, to kind of warn potentially other mages. Uh, this is all before winter because we're told that winter is like deadly here. Um, yeah. So, um, but in the kind of last moments before winter, we take a couple of quick journeys to some of the other towns. Um, we go to one town uh, and we find basically um, two individuals within that kind of are unique and have some magical properties that we kind of pull out. Uh, and essentially what we start to realize that we're doing is just building an army of the most powerful people that we can find. Uh, then we go to another town where there's actually a pretty high population of people that haven't been yep. kind of purged you know, yet. Haven't been purged yet. Uh, one of whom is Jeremy's, I have to assume Jeremy's favorite thing in the campaign. Um, yes! an, old, an old man. Ah, hello. Ah, Isaiah! Oh. <laughs> Jeremy, can you try and explain this character? You have to do this. It's, it's all you, dude. Isaiah was an old man. Just he was an old ass bitch. Statement. Right. Uh, Isaiah just, was like <laughs> the classic, like cartoon character that could just do things that made no sense, uh, but didn't very frequently, and then only did it for stupid things. Yeah. Uh, the concept for Isaiah is he can just, he breaks every rule. He doesn't act, he can't exist in the world, but does. Yeah. That was the only, I never put a, I never decided what Isaiah was. I never thought Isaiah is a god. I never thought Isaiah is a traveler from another world. I never thought Isaiah is a 10th level wizard or, you know, whatever, a 50th yeah. level. I never thought of any of that. I just, Isaiah can just do this stuff. Like, um, no questions asked. Doesn't matter. Yeah, he can just do things. But he did it very frequently. And he also drank a lot. He had his flask on him at all times. What he drank he was, just, was just mana potion. How long did it take you guys to learn that that's what he was drinking? Maybe oh, it took us a time. while. Yeah, it it wasn't until I had done my experiments. Flask, a limitless flask of mana. Um, it, so, was on, it was on the trip back to town, I think. Was it really? Yeah, I don't think... Something it... important happened here. Because in this town, you learned something else. Do you remember? You went to the tavern? Oh, but the oh, tavern. We all found the, the jars. And we found we found and other Hank. You met Hank. Oh, we met yeah, we met Hank. Exactly too. like Hank. Electric Boogaloo. But didn't know who you were. Yep. And then like, we found We killed you. Every bar has yeah, a we Hank. We hadn't killed him yet. Yeah, you Did hadn't killed kill a Hank. Yeah, no, we hadn't gotten to Hank yet. We had to go back to the town and also oh, Slay Bear right. and Nashor. <laughs> Um, so basically, this kind of chunk of the campaign was very much centered around gathering power, gathering allies, and, and kind of coming to the decision that we want to take our town back. And mm -hmm. not only that, kind of with discussions beyond that, we want to not just take our town back, but go... The, and, the country back. Yeah, deal with the empire that is kind of persecuting us in this way. Yeah. Because you found out these, these, these magic things, right? They'd been happening all over the world apparently seemingly or all over the yeah. country it was yeah. a a sudden and out of nowhere just kind of purge and it was not very clear why um, yeah. which is i like that i like the the when you don't know why things are going on, right yeah makes it it gives you something to like work toward why the government, are they doing man, all those students all these purges man uh, <laughs> But anyway, you end up getting a bunch of random people to come back to Carrot with you. Oh, this is and... where we meet James's love interest. Oh, is that oh, is that where Sadie comes in? Sadie, I, no, Sadie no, breaks no, out Sadie of a was... prison. No, 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 because oh, yeah. Sadie was in, Sadie was involved in this whole thing. No, when we Sadie got was in the same no. pack as Isaiah. Oh yeah, Sadie there. So was Will, but we don't need to talk about Will. Right oh, yeah, Will, Will looking there. Fuck. Oh Will, Fuck. you was guys there. want a cookie, man? Oh, God, Will, no. Will Will is, I wanted to is, kill Willard so Will, bad. All Will the time. is Crowley's character, Farful in chat. Uh, I stole him shamelessly and put him into my world because I liked him. Uh, mm -hmm. We get we get a group of uh, individuals that come from another town, uh, which yep. contain uh, they. They're some of my favorites, which are Hans and Franz. Uh, Hans, Hans and Franz, Hans, the, Hans the two and Earth Mages. Pump you up. <laughs> uh, Hans and Franz uh, were very strong powerful. men. <laughs> Uh, they were big, kind of strong men whose catchphrase was, uh, they, they were earth mages, their catchphrase was, move big rock! Yes. Move um, well, big they, they rock. Also, they also didn't speak very well. <laughs> yeah, they didn't speak very well. They seemed to be foreign, which made no sense in the setting. That's okay, though. <laughs> 
I think that was something we as the players made up, and then you just kind of rolled with it. Yeah, so basically that group was a group of farmers from like a little further south that had managed to flee because they lived outside of their town that was being purged when that happened. Right? If I remember that correctly, or from <laughs> Southport? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, Southport, I think, had just been purged, but they made their way there, and then we caught up, and they're like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, you met, you met at Northeast Crossing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Northeast Crossing. We need, I, like, the, the that fact that I don't it. have the map in front of me is bothering right. me so much. Yeah, right. right. It would make things a little bit easier. Uh, and then but... one more group that we kind of interacted with in this time period. Um, mm -hmm. We encountered a group of elves uh, who clearly yeah. had an, also a, kind of a vendetta against the greater empire at large, and that we made kind Being of... that they were slaves! Yeah, there's a, oh, lot, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of lore there that I don't think we have time to get into, as it's already getting near the end of where we normally end D&D time talks. Oh, goodness. Um, we're not yeah, even... We, we haven't even established magical communism yet. The gun yet. Um... God, this campaign was so good. So, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, we, we kind of, um, we encounter this group of elves and we make kind of loose tentative allies with them. So essentially, you know, as we move now That's into... That's what we're calling it now. Allies? Alliances, Pete? We're calling those things alliances? Uh, uh, well, you know, I we didn't, done, we I didn't press... Yet. Yeah. Oh, we didn't, like, press cool... them into our group. We didn't, you know, like... The... They also made oh, wait, a cool wait, wait, wait. philosophy orc who was like a shaman and stuff. That doesn't oh yeah, that. Shadai wait, Shin. Wait. wait, guys, guys, hang on. Are we totally gonna gloss over? We're gonna be spending a lot of time together. Okay. Yeah, we, well, can't, this, we this can't, can't skip that. This is we important. can't skip that. That's <laughs> super, super important. People, let me set the setting. Let me set setting, guys. Let me set the setting. We are in the town of uh, of Northeast Crossing. This is where they met Isaiah and a fairly large group of mages who had not yet been approached. Oh, Kai! They're, they're in the oh, tavern. Kai. I liked Kai. And it, Kai was there. We'll talk about Kai later. They're in the tavern. They're suspicious of Hank, but you're not worrying about it too much. They're drinking, talking to these people, trying to convince them to come with them. Yep. And and the the people agree. I think the people actually already agreed. They've started well, packing yeah, stuff they were, up. Yeah, because they were already on the run. Kind yeah. Of. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's at this point that Indy, James's character, sees uh, what is it? Is it on a dare? Oh, right. No, well, I think so. Kind of. Dared kind of. It's the really, thing it's is, always like, sad. Yeah. Right. Oh, Indy was always like a loner, and you know, he was just kind of like. You know, he never got over Mary Jane, and that's that. That was kind of the joke, is that like, you know, like it you know, someone would. Ago. I'd mention the fire, and then Kyle would, yeah, Ulysses would shout, "It was twenty years ago," and so it's like, yeah, you notice this beautiful woman over, uh, you know, packing up her things, uh, getting ready to join your your caravan, and Hogar's like, "You need to go talk to her right now." I was like, "Oh, yes. she's like, no." <laughs> You gotta go talk to it her. A, it was an oddly realistic situation that right? we kind yeah. of created in this role-playing game. Yeah, uh, and we're all kind of standing watching, uh, in <laughs> both kind of in real life and in character, uh, as James goes to flirt with Jeremy, uh, and you're <laughs> watching as in character he goes to flirt with this character, um, and so Jeremy's kind of like, yeah, you walk over. Uh, and what do you and kind of, and, what, what and do you James do? instead so, of instead what, of what, just what, rolling what, dice what to see how well he talks. <laughs> I just say, so we're gonna be spending a lot of time together, <laughs> and then everybody loses it because uh, like, yeah, because yeah, well, so, so in, in, in real life you lose it, like and roll. also in character <laughs> we lost it because we were all listening in, <laughs> and then. No, please, please. And then, I and then I say, "No, this is this is D and D. This shouldn't happen like real life." And uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's oh, why I'll never shit. live down. So we're gonna be spending a lot of time together. Um, yeah, <laughs> part of the comedy was also all thought he was just gonna roll and not try and just play the scene out, which hey, I absolutely yeah. adore you for that. Jam. I yeah, I, I was like, I was I hard set on the that. role play. Once we were in role play, I had no dice. My magic powers were not social interaction. Okay, <laughs> and, so, I, and so the rest is history. They fall in love and have kids later on. Uh, a guarantee. No, no, she already start. had a kid. She already had a oh, kid. Right, shit. You're Jenny right. Cree. Had a kid. <laughs> well, Jenny. Oh god. <laughs> Let's not talk about that one. She <laughs> came from what? Genesee Pale Ale. Genesee Cream. Genesee Cream Ale. ale. Right. Right. That, was, that, was, that was my favorite beer in college. <laughs> that was the cheapest good. beer in college. <laughs> no, Honey Brown was. Wait, did Pete say something different? 
Yeah, his pizzas are the same, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh so oh boy. <laughs> you're back you're back in carrot and you guys at this point the winter starts. Yes. And when I said like the winter was bad, the winter was like really bad. Like Yeah. How bad did it get? Russian winter. Yeah, uh, we we had I mean, to use magic to, to remove snow, all the snow. Snow above houses. Um, wait, can we just really quickly mention the Yeti hunt? Of course, this was the full right. winter. Yeah, uh, it was my birthday, and I wanted to play, and we didn't really have anything that we're doing. We're just kind of waiting for winter, and so I proposed, "Hey, how about we go hunt Yetis up in the mountains?" And of to... course, Ulysses was on board. Ulysses yeah, to collect the fur nice fur and keep yeah. them from coming down because they come also down in the winter. Also, keep the Yeti population in check. Uh, and I was just like, hot, fun, whimsical Yeti hunt. Nothing too serious, nothing to progress the story. Just fun, little whimsy hunt from a birthday so we can play today. Uh, and Because uh, yeah, well, we hadn't planned on playing that day. Well, the Yetis absolutely rocked our <laughs> shit. Even uh, Brutus rolled poorly in this one. No, no, no. This, this, is, no, 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 this no. was the hero. This oh, is where Brutus became, right. yeah. became a legend. So, yeah, because this in, was where Jeremy was set on killing Brutus. And that's yeah, always. Yeah, been I, I was best. so mad. I was like, Brutus is going to die in this adventure. <laughs> but yep. over the course of like maybe eight rounds of combat, everyone goes down. You get beat about the head, Kyle, again. Multiple times. Uh, I didn't go down. I just. Was oh, oh, I'm sorry. You were fine. Hogar was like dead. Was yeah, there was a dead. Yeti yeah. standing oh, above oh. Hogar ready to punch his fucking face in. Brutus was on death, like death's door. Yeah. But when he sees his father in that, you're like, okay, he rolls to he rolls to get up and like make make his last stand. And and, and so begins 12. like seven consecutive like rolls above a ten on two d sixes, which is outrageous. Uh, as Brutus pretty much dismantles all of the Yetis that were threatening you all. Yep. Yeah, the rest of Which, the Yetis. He takes them out with his bare hands. I roll I roll for these games. I, I roll them in front so people can see all the oh, yeah. rolls. There no, was no Dyson. bullshitting this one. Uh, yeah, this was just... These, these were just... just Brutus ridiculous. was a god. Uh, he was He was, he, the he, killed, he, was, he was just better than everyone. Four Yetis. Four Yetis. Yeah. 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 Jesus Christ. Four Jesus Yetis Christ. with his bare hands. I remember, I remember yeah. Jeremy at one point. This was kind of my favorite... Um, <laughs> This is kind of my favorite moment because Jerry was starting to get frustrated at the time, and he just <laughs> yeah, he attacks Brutus, uh, and he oh, rolls, he I, misses, I it... uh, and then he rolls again, Brutus, and he rolls a, like a natural twenty, tears his head off. I think I think at some time, at some point in time, you also tried to like nerf Brutus by having him try and use my hammer, which was magically enchanted by myself to be light to me. Yeah, I don't but remember. Weighs like some... a shit ton. <laughs> Yeah, um, I did give yeah, him was, one dud round with that. There was yeah. definitely a there was definitely a moment where there was no flower on Jeremy's GMing. It was just Brutus tears his head off. I guess <laughs> like it was just like, <laughs> like we could see we could see the anger. Pure bitter dungeon master. Um, uh, however, unfortunately, uh, Hogar was badly beaten and was actually he was like in a coma for winter, right? Yeah, for uh, most of yeah, winter, yeah. he made yeah. it up for the solstice, but yeah, yeah. So um, one of the characters was like, was out. And which yeah. was The player was not out, but the character was, uh, yep. which was yeah. a very interesting situation. That the was, bright that side was is fun role playing. That player had a ton of care, had, had like their family that they could role play and do stuff with. So they weren't like oh, totally out is, of the picture. This is where we really uh, explored my relationship with Brutus. <laughs> exactly, right? So this is yeah. where uh, Ulysses, Kyle's character, and the this. other and and Brutus got to really yeah. like become bros, right? Well, more, I think more you... so because we grew up together. Yeah, uh, and so oh, it was really we got to to yeah, reconnect. Reconnect, yeah. This is where strike poses with me, brother. Well, came came about. Oh yeah, strike poses with me. Strike poses and then with me. Pete, your character. This is where they kind of got that deeper connection with Hogar, the the currently co comatose character. Right, but is, yeah. isn't it weird to think? Oh, um, yeah. Was this, well, that's, a, was this, that's, that's not even in game. Thing? That was just out of game. No, that's <laughs> that's later. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is where my character just spent a month inside of Hogar's head, trying to put his brain back together, uh, which eventually happened. Uh, and I got yeah. to know him very well in the time that I was sharing his brain for about a month. <laughs> yeah. Now Ooh. I believe that you had at some point in all of this kind of goings on in the fall, you made friends with that group of elves that you mentioned. Yeah, because you helped yeah. them uh, oh, ambush a 
uh, a capital delegation from yep. the the evil capital, oh, which was just called Capital. Real bad. Uh, and I think you killed the prince. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah we killed sure Prince did. Fuckface. Oh jeez, yeah. I don't think he it's had more his... of a name than Prince. Yeah, Fuckface, that was he didn't so. know his name. It was just pretty much that. Yeah, but no, he had the the anti magic field stone. That was the yeah. one that he had. Yeah, and that was that terrified us. So he had to go down. Yep. Yeah, we're like no, that, you need I to forgot die. about that. Yeah, right. Yeah, we yeah, were always afraid there was going to be more of those magic. Yeah, right. It was like. It started off just being like a shell around him, and then, like, as he held on to it, like the area started to grow or whatever. Yeah. And so he had to. Who? I think it was an elf that actually shot him, and then, like, his men ran off. I think it was Valar. Yeah, yeah. Valar. Oh man. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Which is a very elf <laughs> name because friend. it's just a Latin word. Yep. I mean, there was also Veritas. Yep, there was Veritas. Uh, yep. Veritas was an elf that would later become. My character's wife, uh, it was kind of like, it started off as a, a political marriage, uh, but just because it was kind of like a, you know, making friends between between elves and, and elves and humans. Uh, and my character wasn't really into it, uh, but then I found out that sh she was pregnant and I was going to have a son. And that was when my character, like, who was kind of this villainous figure most of the time, started to become something more than that. Uh, yeah. As he was like, well... I'm going to have a family. I'm going to have an heir. Like That was the key. An I, heir. An heir. Which was like, oh, well, I need to create a world for this kid that I'm going to have. Yeah. So and good. I think that was also through the, like, because she had some light healing magic, right? Or something? Or yeah. protective. Yeah, yeah. So she uh, helped she had, like, with shielding home. magic. Oh, we forgot about Lau. Oh, so Lau, Lau, this Lau, time, Lau this time was a monster. Well, Lau, Lau shined in the spring. However, throughout I mean, the whole winter, Pete, you put Lau on autopilot, right? Yeah, I just told Lau to go every day and train the troops, uh, where he was basically just uh, every day just in one of the silent. barns, right, during the no, winter. No, it no, it was just in, out in the fields. In the, no, it was, no, it was in the city square. Not during yeah, was, the winter, though. Oh, yeah, you're right, city square. Um, no, it just, started yeah, then. It every started day, then. rain. It started kind of even before that. Uh, every day, rain, sleet, hail. Lau would just go out and train and do push-ups and exercises. Uh, in complete silence, and just expect the army to be there. And it was kind of taken as like the uh, look at his dedication and his discipline. Uh, and so, like, the soldiers the, just started doing the same. The first and couple days, right? It was like the, people. the first like <laughs> rain. Yeah, exactly. The first rain when no one showed up, and it's just this Jamie Lannister out in the field just doing push ups. Just totally silently for, for hours. hours. Yeah. And the people were just like, holy yeah. shit. And it, uh, it was a, a very interesting point, right? Because you have this godlike man because he has no no concept of pain. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, no concept of pain. Every day. Every day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, never, and, never stopped. And then... Oh, and... Sorry, go ahead, James. Oh, is that... So was no, it the under... Spring is, the spring is where we well, get to reveal... We're not in spring yet. Yeah. Well, because I mean that there's the Saltis. Well, I mean, sometime oh, right. during this yeah, is yeah, when yeah. I find the assassin vines, right? Because uh, no, I was, was on the first. No, that, uh, the that already happened. Journey. Yeah, you found. Yeah, the that already first happened. Time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's but, when we we figured. But that's to... that's an important like yeah, that yeah, that, yeah, that, that creates a whole okay. subplot, right? Vines, yeah. Is that the assassin vines were this really cool monster idea jeremy had that there were just these vines looking things that hung down from trees and if you passed under one it would just like slither get around you. your throat and pull you up get and so yeah i had that being a druid yeah kind i of found out James, that idea. that's not jeremy's hmm? that's not it's jeremy's it's a monster is it really yeah. i didn't oh, uh, oh, no. did it really well yeah more my my, my, my respect for Jeremy has gone down. So no. <laughs> Wait, you had respect for Jeremy? Oof. Oh, thank gosh. Kyle, you're on the right page. <laughs> oh, but, uh, God. Oh. But so, like, as a druid, I'm like, so can I, like, these things have a mouth? And Jeremy's like, yeah, you, they, you think that they feed off of magic. So I'm like, what if I, like, attached one to my shoulder and fed it some of my magical energy, like, a little bit at a time? Boy, and day. Jeremy's just like, uh... I guess you can do that. And I was essentially trying to make like Doc Ock arms out of these assassin vines where I'd like channel my magic through them and use them as just like prehensile, you know, extra limbs. Yeah. And then later, you know, one of the like 
Jeremy's telling me, like, James, the assassin vine you've had for a while, it's starting to get, like, thick. It's really, it's not as ropey as it used to be. Like, it's muscle-bound almost. It's fat. It doesn't move around as good. Uh, I'm like, okay, so, uh, and, you're, and he's like, you can see blue, like, veins crawling through it. Like, this thing is saturated with magic. And I'm like, being an apothecary, what if I, uh, you know, kill this, dry it out, and turn it to powder? And Jeremy's like, yeah, you can do that. And that is where we came up with Sparkle. Yeah. All right? And Sparkle yeah. was this... Uh, it was like cocaine this, for magic. Yeah, it was this. It was magic powder that instantly just, like, shot you up to, like, wicked high points of magic. You essentially gained more spell slots than you were able to handle, and it could fry your brain, and you had to roll to control it. And so I needless think to say, we all when, did a, a copious amounts of sparkle, well, except it was for when, the count. When yeah, you started... When you started with the sparkle, I think that was one of the first real interactions you had with Isaiah, too. Yeah, where he's like, oh, Isaiah boy. Was like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, that's, uh, that's a nice thing you got there. Could I, could I take a little bit of, a little pinch? And then, like, and he I takes some. He snorted it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, no, no, I think, right no, he put it into, like, into a vial or, like, a flask. or, mm. or not into well, it. This, this was later on uh, where yeah. he converted it into its evolved form. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, where he distilled it into shine, but yeah, yeah. which was more like yeah. a mana pot almost. It's like blue potion essentially. I think, and mm -hmm. another thing, you know, throughout this though. whole time, you guys found out Isaiah was just living in what is equivalently a tool shed in the town, and we said, no, that's not acceptable. But 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 he just like, which is just weird. <laughs> like, how can He's you a live weird in a dude? Oh yeah, of course. Um, but anyway, so you learn about shine, and throughout the winter, Kyle, you oh, yeah. Bro, out uh, with this uh, the shaman the orc guy, dude, yeah. the orc shaman who lives yeah. on the hill up by the town, and, and the animals bring him food throughout the winter, or like just walk over yeah. and let him kill them so he can eat them. Uh, yeah, I, and you have I some mainly... like weird ceremonies with him. Yeah, kind of because I, I the the whole reason I wanted to go up there is because so I guess this kind of has to start with how my magic works, which is basically I was yes. an enchanter. Um, and I wanted to figure out better ways to enchant stuff, because basically the only thing I had done up to this point in exploring my magic was just making uh, my hammer an easier weapon to use for myself, so that way I would mm -hmm. be less hindered in combat. Um, in doing so, I was like, now wait a minute. What if I could just write it onto the thing? And I was like, well, how do I do that? I was like, well, I guess I would have to learn how to write first. <laughs> And, and he didn't and know read. how to read. But, there but I said, screw him. that. <laughs> I said, screw that. And I just went to Zhao Dajin because he had sick, like, tribal tattoos that I la later, like, looked at. And I was like, oh, this kind of looked like runes. Like, let's go talk to him. And sure enough, they were. And I was like, can you teach me how to do this? And he said, sure. Uh, not exactly. I don't think there's, there's a real keen there's on it. There's a lot of like he wasn't super keen on this. There's a lot of complicated and intricate PC relationships. There's a character we haven't talked about named Booker who taught Kyle's son Xander how to read, and then Xander started teaching his dad how to read in combination with magic runes from uh, and yeah. tattoos from Jedi. Yeah, and there's like yep. there's yeah. so oh, many. I also learned how to tattoo in that too. It, like the fact that we, that we don't, don't have, have the doc for. that we you know can make the web of characters being yeah. like character yeah. interactions. Like there's yeah, so many. Much. This, See, this world yeah. was I so fully fleshed. Booker was actually super important for my character's development too because that gave Xander. Uh, a way to become more powerful, and I was super well, excited about that. I think we're talking about Xander, but I think we're missing the most, I think, a turning point for your character, Kyle. No, no, no that didn't first... happen until later. That it was the second winter? Second. This was before we set up. So, uh, we went through the winter, we we made friends, we built allies, and then this was the point where after this winter, we decided we're going to go and take back our home. Yeah. Um, and so we yes. went back and kind of had a raid on the, the rift, uh, the original place where we originally kicked out of. Yes. Um, we went in. Uh, Man, there was like a, a big battle. The um, there was kind of this cool aesthetic that Jeremy created where uh, there was always like crows hanging around it after, you know. Totally uh, unique concepts. Yeah, yeah it was, it's a classic, <laughs> but it still worked. It's an um, archetype. Clearly yeah. the spies. Yeah. Um, um, actually, and, I uh, think at that point we had known that they were spies. Oh yeah, we we absolutely. I think the first time a suspicious yeah. crow was described, we knew they were spies. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're like, and we kill it. All right, cool. Let's avoid those. 
But you guys just stormed the town. Yeah, we just stormed yeah. the town. We had our, our army of magical men and uh, and various trained oh. militia folk. And I think this Hang was... On. Sorry, go ahead. In this time, had we opened both jars yet? Had that already happened? No, this was in spring no. that that happened. Okay. Yeah. So no. the first important thing to note is you found out the Baron had kind of gotten bonkers. He was calling yep. himself the lovely Baron now because I had a falling out with League of Legends. So I wanted yes. to get rid of the Nashor part. Uh, <laughs> and you had found out that things had gotten really bad in your, in your hometown. Things had gotten like, ooh, like very oppressive. Um, yeah. And so when you guys attacked, most of the town didn't stop you. It was mostly the Baron soldiers. Uh, um, and I remember there yeah. was like an interesting fight because the Baron was out on like a parade, right? Yeah, yeah. He was having a military that. parade. We had to bash the fash. So. Uh, we basically, we went to raid his house. We realized he wasn't there. Uh, and then when he and came then... back, we had this weird defensive position at his house <laughs> where he was fighting <laughs> on the streets. It's kind of a weird reversal that happened. It was really funny. <laughs> I really um, liked that elf. That was a very oh yeah, his elf manservant. Had... He had the elf slave that he had absolute control over. And you guys had a very, that was like, I remember a very tight moment for a lot of you guys. Cause you're like, we know that this elf is literally just enslaved. Like this is not a yeah. choice that this elf is making to be this guy's servant. No. And uh, I think it was you, Kyle, who just killed him anyway. No, uh, no, we, we, no we, sa we saved him. And we then we save him. Um, and yeah. we kind of looked at him and we were like, we don't know what to do. And we kind of turned him over to the elves because we're like, this is yeah. beyond our ability to judge. Uh, yeah. And we, and cause we led yeah, the attack on the village in concert with the elves. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that was, that was another thing is that we had, we had them something. laying down covering fire. Yep. And, mm -hmm. um, so there, and there was another anti-magic stone, uh, right? Yeah. The Baron had one. Yeah, uh, Hank. Uh, we kill Hank. Hank oh we yeah, we Hank kill Hank. Hank. Yeah. Oh man, that was like he was running through the parade. We had to chase him down, and I'm like the the ground like roots come up under to grab his legs. Like he trips and keeps running, and I think Hogar finally finished him off with a fireball. Yeah. It was either that, or I think I I think I whipped my hammer at him at some point too because I figured out how to do like a magnesis thing with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember. Um, I remember Hogar saying something very cool like. Uh, like, I turn Hank into ashes. Like, <laughs> oh, it, was, yeah. it was a very brutal. Like, it wasn't just like he it wasn't he it was Hank down. It was like the body was down, and then he just continued to burn the body for like a solid like minute of in-game time. Yeah, so, just imagine like brutal. somebody lights someone up with a flamethrower. That body falls in the ground, and, and they just point the flamethrower <laughs> down at them. Just keep going until he's out of mana. And he's like, all right. I'm done. All right, we're done. You guys felt real betrayed by Hank. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he was yeah. he was our best friend, you know. And anyone, and he was gonna betray us and hurt our family. Like mm -hmm. anyone who threatened our family, that was that was someone who had to die. That's the thing. Yeah, and like, I think there was something yeah. else foreboding besides yeah. the uh, besides the uh, the crows. I think there was also like a uh, well, it was... like a, a, a hanged man or something. It kind no, of became sorry, known. No. Well, it kind of became known to us for one thing that Hank was being uh, mind controlled. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, there it was... became known to me, but he was already dead. And that was the thing is that we now knew that there was another powerful mind mage out there who was already, you know, like on a level above Pete's. It. That was uh. That no, he was orchestrating he... whatever was going on. Exactly. Yeah, he was so... the one who was in control of the crows. Which we assume is naturally in the capital of mm -hmm. uh, the Makes sense. and so we've retaken this place uh there's some more time of, of building up and once again gathering power and establishing our town we have a whole part of the game that's basically uh fantasy, sim fantasy simulator 2015 like yeah uh, yeah you guys spend a lot of time microwing that town yeah, what, dude, yeah, we establish fantasy communism in which we yeah. tell people they no longer have to hide their abilities for magic. Uh, I train anybody who has any capability with growing plants to mm -hmm. help help the crops grow so we have more abundant crops than ever before so we're able to feed all the people who are coming to these uh to these places. You know, we have we have 
uh, Franz and Hans building houses out of stone that they can just no, kind of. They were building no, the they, road. No, they dug out. No, they. Oh dug yeah, they out. dug out the road to the mine. They and dug, so, up the, dug out the road. They dig up the road. They yeah. yeah they they yeah, built they, a big they, raised they road the mine, through the basically. forest. To keep it yeah. safe. As a highway uh, straight to the mine. Myself and Brutus start making town defenses. In that time, we yeah. make the uh, the sentry. Now that was really cool. The tower. Yeah, we started. I think the we Black started working on the tower. tower. When did that happen? In I the, think oh, we started oh, working on it, but I don't like, think we finished like it in the I epilogue. That was not a thing that we ever like got okay. through. Yeah. Uh, okay. So anyway, they they do all sorts of stuff. They're and then macro decided, and of oh, course, but wait, Lau wait, wait, is, is training the whole time. Oh, Lau's, Lau's yeah. been training this whole time. Um, as a side note, after the the raid, I for the first time, um, because the way Jeremy created powers in this game is. The core mechanic was the more you do something, the better you get at it, which made sense. Uh, and mm -hmm. I had been making, I'd done this Jamie Lannister illusion so long on Lau, he decided this illusion just sticks now. It's just there. So I didn't yeah. worry about it. And for the first time ever, uh, for the first time since I put it on, I took down that illusion uh, and Lau had no, become I thought that slow. Was, I thought that was during the, uh, no, that was the later the, on. The spring festival. No, that, it was during was the spring festival, wasn't it? Nope, that was Where, during no. The I thought it was during the fight with the Baron because he got because he was in the, the, the anti magic. Right. He was in the so, anti magic field. Um, no, so it wasn't it, that. It was in the wake of the Battle of the Rift. He got stabbed, and I wanted to like take the thing out of him to see how yeah. badly hurt he was. And that was right, why. because you couldn't see. Oh, okay, he had, like tree trunk arms. Yeah. yeah, he was he was jacked. He was actually like what? He was actually like somewhat bigger than the illusion you would put on him. Yeah, now yeah, he was like way bigger than the illusion. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, just which, like, had, which had armor on it. Mm -hmm. Isn't this isn't this also the time where you started exploring your other powers? Um, yeah, you started exploring your telekinesis. Uh, I tele thought it was more of the the time. time oh time. no! That... Uh, well, I haven't learned how to go back in time yet. I learned how to go back in time someday. Spoilies, uh, but I don't think that happened quite yet. I can't remember the first moment. Uh, but well, I think I posed the bird. question. You had a pet bird that Matt killed. Um, and then you yeah. rewound time, but you couldn't go back far enough, so you just watched it die again. Um, no, I eventually saved him. I rewound yeah. time. Oh, like, did you? <laughs> I rewound time. You spent the equivalent of like hours rewinding two seconds. This, this this one two second period until it finally worked out the way I wanted it to, <laughs> uh, and um, that was the first time I ever did time travel, basically. Um, and I the way I posed that to Jeremy was like, "Can I time travel?" And Jeremy was like. Yeah, I mean, you can try to do it. It's kind of in vain. Uh, and I felt like, if I said that, as I asked that question, I felt guilty as a human. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked it, though. Yeah. Oh, so, shit. we keep going. Spring happens. We have a, a big spring festival. Yep. And at this point, fantasy fantasy Russia carrot is excellent. It's a wonderful, oh, it's fantastic. Uh, it took off. bountiful yeah. town. Uh, it's got a pretty big population at this point because of all the refugees. Yep. Um, oh, we found metal yeah. in the mine. Yeah, you found some yeah. metal in the mine, so that's yep, starting so to work out pretty well. Yep. Actually, I started I don't making think weapons it, for the town. I don't think it really starts to pay off too much. In oh, yeah, campaign. first because we yeah. really don't know right. too much about it, but with the with the earth mages, it's actually a lot easier to extract the small bits of metal mm -hmm. than through traditional means. And we get metal. You can't mess with metal. Yeah, and we get metal weapons for all the people that are important characters. Yep, mm -hmm. I make a sick sword for Brutus. I got a, I got a bunch of knives and stuff. Yep, and and uh, I yeah, started. So... Oh, this is when I made my helmet. Oh yeah, when I started we... making my suit of armor. Mm -hmm. So in in knowing how to enchant my shit, uh, I also knew that I was terribly scared of Pete's character, uh, because I didn't want my brain to be fucked with. So the first, so the second thing that I made, the first thing that I made was a dope ass like Sauron gauntlet. That was that was the crit gauntlet. That was sweet. Uh, the second thing that I made was a pretty okay helmet that I would constantly enchant to just have a mind shield. So that way the count yeah, couldn't he get wanted, it. He wanted Magneto helmet essentially. I I, I had Magneto helmet. It was great. Oh, so man, that was you got all that stuff, and I think bring. This is when you start. Um, where do you go from here? You go to Southport, I think. Like uh, we go to Southport. Time, right? I think we. Oh we, yeah, we, this, with is the just the this is just kind of the beginning of the Odyssey. Yeah, we <clears throat> we start traveling around. Well, some somewhere in there, we we go out. We find a town 
that has an exact same tavern as ours that we had in the rift we go to the basement of it we find our same meeting place there yep and we start Identical. poking around uh we find like a, a hidden cubby hole in there and in there there's two coins uh which are super important because we start farming this like metal because we figure out that's magic uh, and then we also find two jars right uh we have no idea what they do so we're like all right we'll take them and we'll deal with it later so we end up going back to carrot once we do that and we we kind of forget about it on the way we get back we're like fuck we have these jars so we open one of them and it's just everything turns dark so we put the lid back on we're like all right what's the other one do we open it it's just pure light we freak out we put the lid back on so like wait a minute what happens if we open both of them I mean, who, together? What player, what player character? I did that. That was me. <laughs> I was in the room, and I was okay with it. Like, Right? Uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to be the one. I remember backing up, but I also, Pete, the player, was like, yeah, I do want to know what happens when you open them both at the same I time. I wanted to open both of them at the same time. Ulysses wanted to know what happened when you open so both you of them at the same time. Did so I, I do. tell you what they were? I don't think so. Okay. No. Uh, but let's, let's just get to the payoff of what happens when I open both of them at the same time. Uh, so simultaneously, light and pure light and pure darkness fill the entire, like a, an absurd radius from Carrie. Yeah, around the whole town, pretty much. Uh, and it fair distance towards miles the border. Outward. Yeah. Uh, and it was just infinite twilight. Everything was twilight. Didn't matter what yeah, time we, of day we, it was. We were kind of in the Feywild from that point on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it kind of fucked with us for a little bit because we were like, when do we go to bed? It, it was like. But we were able to work for like, forever. The, it was like yeah. inventing the electric light. Yeah. You know, we didn't we didn't have to worry too much about the day night cycle. It kind of messed up the plants a little bit, but I yeah, I had guys on that. On that. Yeah, we had, right. major... we had dudes on this guy. Um, yeah. So yeah, all of these things happened, but we we began our odyssey south uh, to go to the capital and to well take it for ourselves. Uh, yeah. So that started. We rolled out with an incredibly massive army, uh, an army that had grown. Dedicated to we skipped a thing. I think we skipped a year. We skipped like. A summer a and a winter. Oh well, we, yeah, we, 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 I, I was I was doing that first. intentionally because there's it's a lot already of, eleven. Yeah, okay. because it's already eleven o'clock, and there's a lot of like just <laughs> what, minutia. One pit stop in second winter. The oh, the Kyle, solstice the festival? festival? No, Kyle. Oh no, this is super important. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that is okay. uh, one yeah. pit stop in the second one, winter. One pit stop. So at this point, Kyle's this, son Xander. I was oh, about let me do this. Let me please. So so at this point in time. Xander has now been apprenticing with Booker for a hot second. Uh, and he's real good at it. He's he's super good at transcribing everything. Uh, he's he's wicked smart. I All think right? he'd gotten your resurrection scrolls, right, at this point? Yeah. Your so, one yeah. get-out-of-jail-free card? Yeah, my one get-out-of-jail-free card, because he was super worried that his dad would get beat about the head too much. <laughs> uh, and so I was, like, super, super excited about that. But then there's also Josh who was still the jock who everyone in town hated. They were like, he's a shithead of a son. Do something about this. And so, what do I do in this time? I'm like, you know what? He is a shithead of a son. I don't know how to make this better. So what I do is I go home one night. He's there. I look him dead in the eyes, throw him a sword and like a backpack, and say, don't come back until you make me proud. And he's like, never heard from again. It's like a foot and a half of snow going into the dead of winter. <laughs> yep. and oh, we also, know, we your... also know that there's dragons. We know that now. there's a dragon there. Yeah. Yeah, you... yeah we because we had ventured up into the north already to visit the elves and whatnot. We don't know how far it is, but we know that somewhere up there, there's a dragon that's roaming. Oh, God, yeah, no, because when, and... when I lost my mind on Shine there, after I had concentrated Sparkle into its distilled form with the help of Isaiah into pure, unadulterated power in a liquid that you take a shot of, your eyes just it, emit blue. blue light. And uh, yeah, you, you my, go my wife had teleporting powers, and she took the shine, oh, and, and I tried to <laughs> hold on to her, and we ended up in the very far north, in the northest you could go, where we met the great tree, right? The yep. the elder tree who yep, told us yep. they were deliberating. It was kind of like you know Lord Ooh, of the Rings, Prince. This has oh, been a Father very Ironwood. long time since anyone. Referred to you as the dust. Oh yeah. 
because like compared to this giant father tree was just huge. Was it you two talking? alone up there? No. Yeah, it was um, just yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, for because... that for that one time, yeah, because then Sadie managed to teleport them both back, and then we, as a party, took an adventure up there. Mm -hmm. uh, no, um, what happened was he he teleported because we'd heard about ironwood, uh, which would be a replacement that would be more plentiful. Where hope was we could grow these trees and it would make new weapons out of ironwood because we don't yeah. have enough steel to make weapons for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so he goes and finds this. Uh, he starts coming back, but he doesn't make it all the way back. And then Brutus and Hogar went on a single two man journey which was one of i thought the coolest most cinematic moments in the campaign where we were setting out on our odyssey to go bring an army south as brutus and hogar walked north into like the blistering winter uh to go look for indy who was somewhere dying out in the woods and oh yeah i was dying in a cave with a spike through my chest yeah oh right and then oh no that was later on where you yeah because i i had to fight yeah. off like five trolls like a dire troll or whatever right there was yeah, some it wasn't like a that. giant you had a fight you had that was when I first. That's when I first initiated mech mech tree tree suit. <laughs> grass man. Grass man. Grass not man. grass man. We're... You're not grass man yet, but I loved that. For I don't but... know why that's such a highlight for me, but it's grass man. <laughs> Get grass man. Grass man. Um, so allow us to skip ahead a bit. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, we start journeying south. There's a lot of kind of smaller encounters as we're seeing different locations uh, around the world. Um, I don't know if there's any of those that you in particularly want to highlight. Um, the one uh, that Long Forgotten was pretty good. Long Forgotten, yeah, Long the Forgotten town that cool. town of ghosts. Yeah, um, town of ghosts, stuck in time. It was pretty cool. I think I think it was the the big one for me was wherever it was that you found the other another Hank. Another I... Hank. You found another Hank. We found a third Hank. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I think you guys just immediately killed him. Yeah, we did. Um, yep. yep, yep, yep. I mean, I can't remember third Hank. I remember second Hank for sure. He had like a crystal in him. I think. Oh, yeah, that's he oh, because that's when we find out Hank's a golem. Yeah. yeah, you find out Hank was a construct the whole time. Yeah. But that's it, though. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I think no the only other one is um, what you call it? Not paradise. Indies wood. Uh, Prosperity? not Indies no. wood. Prosperity. Pro Prosperity, Fair. yes. Prosperity to me was the most important stop on the way towards the capital. It was this a real nice town that everybody, you know, they they had a they had a great grand old time. They were real nice people, but the thing was that they were all making sacri blood sacrifices to the very hot, the very hot fuzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very much hot fuzz. Crusty jugglers. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you. Killed parrot. You destroyed. You destroyed. Yeah. Well, parrot. so so oh, they took oh, one of our guys really hostage, fair. right? Like they took one of our dudes for the sacrifice because he had gotten drunk at a, at the party, right? Mm -hmm. And and d they disappeared him, and somebody noticed. We were like, wait, we have to find this guy, and then we see that he's going to be sacrificed, and we essentially fight off all the cultists, and that pisses off demon in the sky. Uh, and Jeremy, you are the one who tries to smite Matt with lightning. And Hogar's like, well, you know, fools, Aaron. I'm I'm all about redirecting lightning. You know, my entire backstory, we've talked about how when Sterling would accidentally summon lightning stores, I'd have to push him away from the house. Like he's an accomplished mage at this point. And you're like, I remember the look on your face as you roll the attack roll against Matt. You're just like, so he's uh, it's an 11 roll to defend. 12. And it's like, you need the 12 on this. Yeah. You need it. Otherwise, this demon is smiting you from the sky. And Matt rolls a 12. And then a just of fate dice. Ugh, the lightning just uh, redirects up into the sky. And then the, 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 the darkness clears, except it starts to rain blood on the town of Prosperity. Oh, brutal. Uh, yeah. And I think that was Matt's proudest moment. Uh, uh, I in... don't know. Matt had a lot of really sky solid. demons no. are pretty fucked. From from Matt's perspective, I think that was the thing that Matt himself was most proud of. He did in the campaign because uh, he was just like I, yeah. I I killed their god. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he did. Um, yeah, I so, killed your god. Do you understand? Arrived, uh, we arrive at the capital to jump ahead again. Well, um, we skipped Indies Wood entirely. Oh, uh, we also it wasn't skipped, Indies Wood. Indies Wood. Yeah. Indies Wood didn't exist yet. I mean, there was yeah. like a lot of stuff with Kai, but we haven't talked about Kai. I don't think we. 
Yeah, there was that time where I lorded over a cottage uh, for a weekend. You, that, yeah, that, you, that, that right, you, talk you leave, Kyle, Ulysses I, abandons his family shortly after <laughs> sending John to die. This. I'm still oh upset. God. All right, so uh, this betrayal. That's the end of your relationship with your your character's wife. Yeah, that was uh, weird. She kicked you out, I think. Yeah, she did. I was like, That's yeah. Weird. I mean, no, uh, no surprise there. Yeah, I mean, uh, she wore the pants in that relationship. Uh, as you guys are adventuring, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Pete. I was gonna say this is where the party, um, and you've seen already that there was starting to be some <laughs> suspicion amongst the party. Like, for example, Kyle oh, building shit, a helmet yeah. in fear of me. Um, uh, I then pro- I then proceeded to build an entire suit of armor, which I magically enchanted to defend against everyone. Uh, and you know, right? Hog- Hogar was also kind of like training, and and well, he also had a magic bow that helped him, uh, but was yeah. training to like not let me get into his brain no. uh, and things along no. those lines. So there was definitely some airs of suspicion that were starting to grow between people as we're all very powerful. Uh, Sterling and... was going to kill your ass if you tried anything on on Hogar. By the way, yeah, that oh, was absolutely. like a, that was a thing. Um, <laughs> fair enough. Anyway, um, oh, we've, yeah. we've had, there's been so much out of character posturing about who would yeah. win in the battle, uh, that we would <laughs> we, go into, we would so, devolve. Yeah, so, oh no, I meant, so... I meant during the march, during the march. Oh yeah. Um, I was never going to fucking try anything on Hogar. He's like a brother to me. Uh, the. <laughs> me though. Definitely. Uh, but Ulysses had sown a lot of distrust. One, because he sent his son to die. Uh, and two... <laughs> We were all like, you listen, we need to go find him. And you're like, no, he'll, he'll come back fine. when he makes me proud. And we're like, I did. I had full. So, so here's the thing about that. I had full faith that Josh would do something to make me proud. I didn't know what it was going to be. All right. I had no idea what would make me proud when I said it. But I knew that if he just went out and then came back, it would have been fine. And he never came anyway. back. Anyway. Kyle, you go to a small town, you leave the army for no, no, a time, no. and so, so I, leave, I leave the Hamlet. army. Not even that. It's literally a cottage on a lake. <laughs> because I wanted to explore what the lake was, because we were marching by it, and no one else wanted to go explore. I was like, fuck you mm-hmm. guys, I'll be back. And so I did. And I just walk up with this suit of armor to this cottage, and obviously, with a world where metal is scarce, I am a god. All right. <laughs> And he lords over this fucking oh, this over random this couple cottage. in the woods uh, for like two daughter. weeks. Um, <laughs> just, just whose name what? escapes me now? Was it uh, <laughs> Evelyn? No. Yes, this is how important she was to yeah. you, Kyle. Yeah, yeah right. Remember. You abandoned your family right. for this woman. <laughs> You abandoned the campaign uh, trail. I did. You abandoned, you I did. abandoned our quest. You just left the quest to, to go lord over a cottage. I didn't uh, know what he was going to find there. Yeah, but you didn't have to stay. <laughs> Farful and chat pointing out the best, most important part about this girl. Oh, yeah, it's uh, true. She was oh, a vampire. She was a, yeah, she was, she a, was vampire. a fucking vampire. And then uh, yeah, which which I, discovered, I discovered on, on the way back to camp, uh, at some point I was like, so vampires, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then boom uh we we become a vampire by we i mean the royal we being me <laughs> so no uh, one trusts ulysses but he's really oh, good at fighting and his armor is real good so we're gonna be friends with him still it's uh, like i was the tank yeah right the rest of us were all squishy well the thing is that i had well, to make pure, myself D- into less matt of was the pure dps less of the squish yeah matt was matt, the the elemental magic bow that he managed to create was Absolutely was monstrous. Was unreasonably great. Um, the, you know, like, and, I, I, liked, I liked the struggle I made him go with for that. The oh, amount right. of times he had to, so, to try and the denier. carve the bow. That was that was great. Uh, but the I guess... So this whole vampire thing, let's wrap this up real fast because like that that kind of matters. Uh, she told me it, the, the only way I could become a full-fledged vampire is if I kill the person I love the most. And so obviously yes. player me was like, well, it has to be my wife. She's my fucking wife. Little did I know I was fucking wrong. <laughs> and that person was Brutus. Um, Strike poses with me, brother. Strike. That's later. That's, That's later during the final fight. Well, that was right? like your catchphrase between the two of you throughout the it campaign. Was. You yeah, always said, Strike poses. Uh, one of you would say it to the other one. And um, then we would. It was great. Repeat correct. In the interest of time, we do need to push forward. Yeah, yes. uh, so let's you get march... us to the final battle. Yeah, you march yeah, through, sure. you gain a whole bunch of allies along the way. 
Uh, you find out all sorts of stuff through various NPC allies you've connected with along the way, like uh, Kai and yeah. some other characters we haven't mentioned. Isaiah gives us a bunch uh, of insight. Yeah, Isaiah, that guy who Isaiah... made the anti magic stones, yep. the yeah, guy from the Isaiah... volcano. Does Isaiah yep. just fuck off at this point? He leaves at, at some, some point. point. Yeah, he yeah, at some point he leaves. Yeah, at some he point, just, he just like, leaves. Uh, I think the only one he talks to at the end is Hogar. Yeah, yeah. and because yeah. uh, he he was close with Hogar. Um, and so you guys get to the walls of capital, which are just ludicrously, he- comically large city yeah. walls around the city. Um, and a lot of stuff ends up happening. You're trying to figure out like how we're going to breach it. And what it comes down to in the end, it was Ents, which yeah. Indy had, had coerced. Yep. Uh, from old father Ironwood, uh, to hell. dragon just beating down the walls. Yeah, one of one of the dragons. There were only four dragons in the setting. They were called the Great Worms, uh, and they each yep. had a different element they could use. This one was the Water Worm, and his thing was his breath turned whatever it touched oh, into right. water. That's because. So, so wait, is that the one that we birthed from one of the eggs that we found? No, no, that no. Was that was the, the one that I, Willard that was, made that friends the one with. That I was going to have my son ride and did. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, um, me and, um, so yeah, me and, uh, myself and Hogar kind of went ahead of the army while there was this big clash at the main gate, a uh, lot of stuff happening, NPCs, you know, being attacked and killed, um, mm-hmm. cool mechanic that Jeremy had made where basically it was like power word kill on a D20 roll, uh, and each, yeah, each, each NPC had a, uh, had every, a everyone got dice. a, I had everyone tell me all of the NPCs they cared about and just made a table of them. Yep. And as long as the battle went on, there was a chance one of them died. Every time he just rolled the dice, it was brutal. Um, so me and Hogar go ahead to go to like the big tower, the big tower at the center where we assume, you know, our final threat is going to be uh, the big bad. We climb it. Um, but well, outside the tower. Yes. Because I think we need to get oh, back to town. But, but yes, uh, Ulysses oh. and Indy. Well, Indy yeah. is a giant so... tree monster. Oh, yeah. Tree monster. I have, I have melded monster. with plants, uh, have essentially encased my body in multiple trees. Uh, also, fuck seaweed. Seaweed's a liar. Never trust <laughs> it. Uh, never trust kelp. Never trust the kelp, dude. Ah, oh, fucking never, kelp. Never trust the kelp. Those bastards. Lion, uh, lion, lion cheats. Yeah. But yeah, I was essentially frontline siege monster uh, trying to break down one gate. Thank God the dragon attacked the other gate to divert their forces. Otherwise, we would have been uh, in trouble, even with the Ents on our side. And uh, and the thing about this battle was that there was a there was a green beam that would shoot out of the sky and could mind control people. Right? Mm-hmm. It was essentially the. Yep. The evil mind mage working for the Empire had this crazy power that would just absolutely take someone oh, over. Shit up. Yeah. And the person oh, that it actually hits be the one is... and only Brutus. And no, so... it was uh, it was Valar. It was the one that oh. ended up dying from that. No, oh no, 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 died no. died to it. Died. Oh yeah, Valar died. Well, 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 well first it well first it hits Lao. Um, but Lao cannot be affected. Oh, right, we didn't even yeah. go through Lao's final oh, power-up. Yeah. We haven't even we, seen his final form. We'll talk about Lao, and, we'll talk about Lao right now. Fuck it. L- Lao woke back up. Yeah, yeah, at this point, it was during this final, like, preparations. No, it didn't when Lao get magic? Grigorovich realized that he wasn't controlling Lao anymore. That Lao was just doing these things. Uh, and well, yeah, when you tapped tried, back in... Control. And then he fought back. Uh, well, yeah. no, the, the moment was I tried to kill myself um, so that I would be resurrected back in town because there was a resurrection soul because I wanted mm-hmm. to witness the yep. birth of my son. Uh, right. and, I, and I got, like, tied up by Hogar. Uh, and then I was like, Lao, kill me. And he was just like, no. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, Lao? What? And I was <laughs> like, you do not disobey me. And then I tried to, like, mind control into doing it. And Jeremy's just like, you can't anymore. <laughs> I was, like, wait, what? I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? Excuse me? I remember yeah. I remember one of the things about Lao is he was like, despite all the horrible things that you did to him, you turned him from like a shitty roadside bandit to a god amongst men. So he and was he pretty was cool he was it. pretty cool with you guys by the end. 
He was like your your most trusted lieutenant, right? Pete? He was like, yeah, that's kind of fucked was, up, was, but I guess it general. worked out. Yeah. Yeah. The great general. And he was so strong, right? I remember that, Jeremy, you you just like would roll dice to see like, oh, so how much does your power increase by? And Lau just rolls a 12. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's he just like he turned on his power up like many, many times. Yeah. yeah. And then I loved... It, it was such a fitting moment where you're like, where Lau comes to us, he's like, I'm not sure what to do with my power. And we're like, what do you mean, Lau? And he like takes the lump of coal and he presses it in his hands. You roll the dice. It's another 12. And then inside is just a diamond. And that was what Lau was. It was the lump of coal. Into a diamond. We oh, pressed man, between the immense now. pressure. <laughs> the metaphor. Incredible. And, oh, the other thing was that gems could hold magic inside yeah, of them. Yeah, that was super important. That, that was the thing, is that, like, gems could magic. hold a certain number of points. And so diamonds, we'd never found diamond before, could hold a serious amount of magic. I was the one who had the diamond on me. Or was it Hogar who had the diamond? Hogar. 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 We thought Hogar was the best to, to be the holder of it. So, Brutus gets mind <laughs> yes. controlled go, by say, the big bad. Yeah. And there's like sure a super does. intense showdown between you, Ulysses, and Brutus. Yeah, things had kind of we broken destroy, off and we're we doing like simultaneous like battles. The... Well, yeah, because you I have was a like... Dragon Ball Z style like fight. You're going well, cr- yeah, crashing so, through buildings. So it's, it's, it's even more so Dragon Ball Z because I, I take Brutus off to a part of town which is no longer inhabited to make sure we don't fuck up any of our own troops, right? Because Brutus yeah, right, is you not lured allowed. him away. Yeah, Brutus is with my lightning fast boots. <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh, I believe also, the, also the first dimension. moment of that was was Brutus. I just was like Hulk running down a side alley yeah, while he was. while you were riding on uh, a horse. I think. Well, no, while you were no. riding on Indy. Oh. Yeah, because uh, I was like, I was tree manning over my way yeah. to uh to and the tower. Started climbing up it. Hour, million mile per hour spear tackled you off of the back of Indy, and you guys like tumbled off into a side part of the city. Yep. <laughs> yep, we sure did. And then we we fucked each other up real bad. That was uh, a very back and forth that, fight. So so in the final battle, this is the only thing that I did was fight Brutus. Yep. Yep. Uh, it was just pure one v one. Yeah, we went pure one v one. He destroyed my armor, which I thought impossible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is Brutus. Though. Impossible. This is Brutus. Um, and it I mean, came yeah, down to this that, moment like, where where Brutus had the upper hand, uh, and yeah, Brutus was like on top of. Uh, no, other way around. Other way around. Uh, I got the upper hand of Brutus. I I was beating the shit out of Brutus because at this point, you know how we said that Brutus never rolls poorly. Um, well, this no, one, but uh, this one well, fight, this, uh, there was the turnaround. There was a moment where Brutus oh, was, was right. had ta- you tackled and had his sword like to your head, uh, and for the first time, I believe in the entirety of the campaign, as he had you with like this would be a killing blow on you. He rolled. He like rolled a two. A, He rolled the. A natural two, which is the equivalent the of the crit, crit fail. fail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so he missed. The only time. And then so yep. I started getting the best of him, just socking him in the face. And so we had the turnaround where now I was standing above him, and he was pretty much out. Like I. I mean, you had his head in like your gauntleted. Oh, fist. I did. Yeah. No, I was. I was ready to kill him. And then I look at Jeremy. I was like, I'm gonna do it. And he, Jeremy was like, What? And the rest of the table was like, What? Because we hadn't fully disclosed what my requirement was to become a full vampire until yeah, this Yeah, none of the rest moment. of the party knew. And so I, I tell him, and everyone starts to freak the fuck out, because like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so we go to roll for it. Jeremy rolls to see if he breaks the mind control. And he does. And the only thing that he says, looking through my gauntlet at me, as I'm like coming down on him, it's just strike poses with me. And to this day, it breaks me as a person. Like, I, I legitimately fell out of my seat crying because I couldn't deal with it this anymore. Strike poses with me, brother. And I, I, I just it's, collapsed it's just on kind the of, And it was just kind of like, I can't do it. I, me as a person, like, I, you guys remember that. I literally fell onto the ground. And in, like, the field, says, I can't, I can't. I'm not going to do it. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were you were in I was a tears. <laughs> oh, dude, this campaign drove so many of us to such emotional places. Uh, and then, meanwhile, 
me, Hogar, and Indy are climbing the tower to face, you know, kind of big bad. Um, nowhere near as terrifying as Brutus, but <laughs> big bad. Uh, and we climb the so tower. Indy can't get in. Because he's a oh, because I'm tree. I'm a giant tree monster. But yeah, he puts your elevator up. up. Um, yeah, well, he climbed up the side. Um, yeah, he and can't climb eventually, well, eventually he shrunk out of his trees and dropped into like a window. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was after me and Matt had gone through some stuff, uh, and we came into essentially the king of the kingdom's chamber, uh, and we see very clearly as we look at him um, that he's being kind of. Uh, quote unquote sequel. Who's the king of Rohan from Lord of the Rings? Remember that like you Theoden. know that image? Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah, it's Theoden in it's Lord of the that. Rings King. That's, like, yeah, when you first see him where he's like And more than that, they've seen the big, you know, obvious Archmage's tower coming off of the Beyond. So we're yeah. like immediately make the conclusion this is a puppet king, uh, and we will move like we have no business with this individual. Uh and mm -hmm. We we move up the tower. Um, we yep. go and we kind of battle. There was was it an orb? There, was that what the thing was? Oh, yeah, it was a gem. Um, there's a few other rooms you fought through it. Yeah. No. There's well, there was stuff. like some elves, right? That uh. Yeah. We're still enslaved. Yep. Uh, we get up to the top, uh, and there's this kind of archmage and kind of a cloaked figure. Uh, carrying an orb we do a little bit of battle against this individual and he falls and drops the orb uh or the the gem which i pick up and all of a sudden everyone anyone who picks up this orb we find out is controlled by it um so we're almost like battling an idea now at the top of the tower where we're just kind of like fighting amongst each other as just this object is controlling us and we try and like pass it from person to person um, and on the top of this tower in the ensuing battle where we're kind of being dominated around in a circle. Um, and this is technically the most damage I ever took, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, Indy gets his, just gets killed by Hogar in like a really powerful, essentially laser blast at this point is what he's yeah. moved on past fire. Uh, and, and then disintegrated. Yeah. I end up, yes. uh, and that was after the orb was in my hand for a while and my hand had to get cut off so it would drop the orb. Um, so this, we finished this kind of battle and it's like, it's done. We have beaten our foe. Uh, and we realized like, oh, well the king back on the throne, he wasn't actually, he was like double punking us by pretending to be someone being controlled uh, when actually he was the one pulling the strings. Um, and now we're just like our best friends dead in the tower. Uh, you're all you're well, both on the brink. Pete's I think, missing a hand. Hogar is like I think, like, think Hogar is mind controlled at this moment. Yeah, he's about to kill Pete. Yeah, um, he's about to disintegrate you. Because he also killed he also killed Veritas because she was there. No. Veritas. No. Yeah, she was. No. Wasn't no, she? Veritas is home. No. Yeah, Veritas she was, was about right. to give she birth was, throughout this uh, whole She had had no, the I child. Thought, I thought she did. Forbade I thought her she did already and then and then rejoined the, the campaign. Valar Valar was um Oh, okay. Her yeah, replacement. Yeah, yeah. was the one that was killed. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. Um, but uh, so yeah, Hogar's about to kill me. Uh, and I, throughout the campaign, I'd mentioned that I had time travel. Uh, and I, the thing about the time travel is both in character and out of character, I didn't remember to use it. Um, like where, ever. Yeah, ever. Except, except for the shit. stupid shit. The except for the shit. dumb shit, uh, which was kind of perfect, honestly, uh, yeah. because yeah. it's too powerful. Uh, but. I would, when I used my time travel, I had never had a moment. Jeremy would always say, like, yeah, you travel back in time, and you have, like, a vague sense, but usually things would happen the same way because I couldn't remember that I went back in time when I did it. Um, and for the first time ever in this campaign, I just say, Jeremy, I go back in time. Uh, and... You didn't ask me if you can go back in time. You say, I go back in time, and you put dice on the fucking table. Um <laughs> I have these dice that are called, that we call the drama dice. Oh, the drama um, dice. They are made of wood, uh, and they're really poorly weighted, and they take an extremely long time to roll. Um, and I rolled them, and they rolled off of the table. Uh, and we usually had a rule about that, but we all just were like, no, that's just, this is the roll. And we all stood up and walked over to the other side of the room where they had settled, and I had rolled a, uh, I had rolled the double sixes, the nat 20 equivalent. Uh, and I stood back in front of the king sitting in the throne uh, with my allies to my left and right, pretending to be feeble. Um, 
and he kind of was directing us to the wizard again beyond in the tower. I just went up to him uh, kind of the same way I did the first time and just one of my other primary abilities was floating knives around with telekinesis. Uh, and just out of my bag, I just take out like eight knives and just <laughs> all into the king and then the tower collapsed and that was the end of that game. Yeah, you that were was, very that was close. The actual campaign. Like that, that crit was the difference between you lost and and you, you won. saved the kingdom. Yeah, well, and, like, it was. It I'm was okay like with that. It was know? kind of like a a, a you lost because technically we beat the dude. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, in the first the time thing. run, but no. But we didn't beat the. Dude. But we didn't feel like we did because no. we lost all of our dudes. Yeah. Okay. The, the king. Yeah. The king was the the real thing. Yeah, and then oh, and then I had to take the diamond from Hogar, and you know I had kind of dabbled in healing magic a little. Yeah, and I was just like Jeremy, how much how much mana can I put into the spell? And you're like, oh, as much you as the, even the diamond. Your vines. Yeah, we did. And I, I fucking and I and I took the I it took the the diamond. I was like. No, I won't lose everyone. Everybody lives, and you know I spent most of the the epilogue in a coma. Yeah. Well, in a tree. And yeah, in a tree. That was the other thing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, it was a dramatic and we, conclusion. And then it was. It was Pete a beautiful, beautiful end. Yep, I became the king, uh, and we moved the capital back home, and we lived at home, and. Everything went happily ever after. Magical Forever. fantasy communism was the greatest yep. idea. While I was alive, at least everything was good. Yeah, yeah. I got uh, I got banished, which isn't surprising. Oh yeah, yeah. you got banished because you you well, ended up becoming of, a vampire. Only kind of, but you didn't I, end up killing anyone you loved. You just murdered a ton of other people instead. Yeah, you just killed like forty other people to make up for it. Like old people? Like no, they were not old people. They were all prisoners. But oh, they were prisoners right. under the king's oh, old that's regime. Right. Yeah, uh, you went into the dungeons. Just... <laughs> uh, there were details, and that. we were like thinking about running a campaign where we played our children, uh, which we didn't end up doing. Um, but yeah, then we, we went into the epilogue. We all became very powerful and became more and more mistrustful of each other. Uh, and uh, uh, I did. I I was essentially black ops for Pete. Yep, that's true. Full Sasuke. Yeah. Uh, Hogar. Uh... <laughs> Hogar didn't want Ulysses no, around, but come on. Yeah, I guess more more Itachi. Uh, but that is I mean, the story of the Crucible, pretty much. Uh, I mean, that's that's the shortest that way we could the, tell it, and a, it took two and a half hours. It took two hours. hours. Two hours. But yeah, that Damn, was the James, most you, you that, that could pretty, possibly pretty be. Mm. A couple of of key kind of points from throughout the adventure uh, that we didn't that we didn't really touch on. Uh, Kyle found a legendary magic weapon that was oh. designed to kill the great worms, and tried to reforge it into a sword. And no, 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 it could take it could it. take any shape that it wanted. You killed the sentient weapon. I made it. Uh, no, I made it. I made it retarded. It was still sentient, but it was effectively just Lao. You, you yeah, you, but no, you, 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 it I, was worse I, than that though. It wasn't even blank. It was now that the runes just didn't work. You just put a bug in the die. code yeah, and, and then fix it. And, and then it was just forever a gigantic ballista bolt. Uh, what <laughs> else it did you? Change into anything else? What else did you guys do? A couple like mm, uh, we takeaways. built. We built the tower. We built. We yeah. built the black tower. You found which, there could was, shoot laser beams. Yeah, there was a really cool uh, archaeological kind of moment where you guys found an old uh, ruin of some ancient empire and explored in there. And I think you went back in time in there or something. It was the, it was yeah, long forgotten? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're yeah, long yeah, forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. It was the sort of and you, you know when the Night's the, Watch was still stone. like a thing. Yeah, yeah, and you found that they made a lot of their stuff out of this black stone that was magic immune. Uh, you yeah. built a big tower out of that that became like a wizard school because it yeah, was safe that's, for magic. Because that's the same place where we found the the magic weapon that I fucked up. Um, what else? I, I mean, there are a whole ton of things. Crowley keeps talking about it. I made Son of Lao. Oh yeah. oh yeah. yeah. At some point you guys ran into uh a wasn't it a messenger this and like... the most e this is the most evil thing I think I've ever done in D &D in D D. &D. But this was practically real life, so it counts. <laughs> it was a uh, great situation. I'm sorry, but you wanna say it? Uh I... no, you can go ahead, Jeremy. I was just like they were traveling along the roads and they ran into a, a dude 
uh, who had magical ability and his son uh, that were, I think, Indy knew, but I don't think Indy was there. Um, no, oh, and they were trying to flee hmm. uh, from uh, from Rift because of all the stuff going on. They were trying to sneak out. Uh, and when you guys kind of came upon them, there was like some really bad charisma like stuff. Because I think someone was pr- trying to pretend to be the guard because you were trying to sneak in as the guard. Oh, to that, get was that was um, me. And what ended up happening is the dude ended up just drugging himself to like to not get captured and tortured. Yep. Uh, and tried to do the same thing with his son. But it failed. Uh, but uh, it failed. And- you guys tried to save him. And the son I tried to save, and the m- manner in which I attempted to save, uh, uh, the manner in which I, I I saved him was by doing the same thing to him that I did to Lao, where I made him essentially a small puppet child, uh, and then I worked him into Lao's backstory, where um, <laughs> the the kid didn't have a tongue. Oh uh, yeah, and Lao doesn't it speak got, because out of it got screwed skin. up from the the poison. It yeah, got screwed up from the poison, and then I've worked the reason that the general Lao, the healer of the sick, the champion of the people, people, slayer of demons. Yeah, the reason he doesn't Color, speak is because because when his son lost his voice, uh, he made a vow of silence to never speak again as an act of solidarity with his child, uh, and oh, it was Christ. a very it was very bad. And the people oh, loved God. him even more for and it. The people yeah. loved him even more. I think yeah. everyone else in the game, except for like a couple of the NPCs, loved Lao way more than any of you. Oh yeah, no, the, yeah, there, there was there was a statue Lao. built in Lao's honor. Wait, wait, wait. Bionic oh, yeah. Shiba, that's pretty fucked up, really? Now, <laughs> wow, you don't say. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Um, anything else? That any last one more from everyone uh, of one last sure. thing that everyone likes? Jeremy, we'll you want to start? I was gonna say we'll start with we'll start with you, James. One last thing that I liked uh, in the campaign. Um, oh God! See, because like, like what? What favorite moments do I really have? Oh no! Of course, the the solstice festivals. Oh, we didn't even talk. So we didn't even cool. talk about my wonderful pies, right? Um, in oh, which yeah. I, I I was a great cook, and there was just me in the kitchen with the women cooking up food for the festival and I have the vines grabbing things off the shelves and it's like, oh yeah, no, well I know all the herbs to make nice spices. Be like, well this tastes good and then people are like seasoning exists. <laughs> and I was like one of the first people to really like you know experiment with these crazy seasonings. Invented yeah. seasoning. And uh and yeah the just the pot the the yearly pie eating contest. Yep. That uh, that we had to go through. Uh, that was just good, good, lighthearted fun. I still, I still text everyone from this campaign Happy Solstice every year on the solstice because of this <laughs> campaign. Exactly. Yeah. Kyle, let me think here. Oh man, it had to be when I first started learning how to do tattoo runes. <laughs> <laughs> And so I don't remember what it was. I think it was, I, I effectively did like a really uh, basic one, which was just heat or something like that, right? And so I put magic energy into it. And then it was just high, like uncomfortably high. And I was like, okay, can I take it out? I was like, nope, can't learn how to do that yet. Because that's not a thing that I can learn on this coast. I would have had to travel across the world to learn that. And so uh, at some point, uh, me and Matt's character Hogar were having a, a pretty heated argument, and he knows about it, so he just slaps my arm and puts one in, and it's just uncomfortably hot. I'm just like, "You son of a bitch!" <laughs> that yeah. was a good one. That was a good move. It was. That was really funny. I I loved that moment. Some hey, people Jeremy? talk about mistake tattoos. That's a mistake tattoo. Oh, that was <laughs> a very mistake different. Tattoo. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, I fixed it later. So I mean, Pete, do I have to go or can I go last? I'm the dungeon master. Fair enough. It's only right. Um I was just trying to stall. All right. Um the <laughs> like, Wow, Shiva. All right. I... I mean, I guess I could have. Uh the in the epilogue, uh, this is something I love. We'd always had this vision of creating a big giant golem. That was something that Hogar really always wanted to do was build a golem. And and we'd had some very, very limited success. Uh, but we couldn't make anything stick around. Uh, but essentially, Jeremy let us kind of in the epilogue be like, yeah, you figure it out, you do it. Um, and Isaiah had this quirk 
where uh, where he would answer when you asked him anything or to do anything or to help, he would randomly say either yes or no. Uh, and then that didn't mean anything. And then he would take a drink from his blue potion, his, his drugs essentially, and then give you the real answer to the question. Um, so he would just say, yes, yeah. just drink. No. no. <laughs> uh, and so we had this kind of vision in our mind because we knew there was a dragon somewhere in the distant future that was going to come for the city of giving this golem uh, Isaiah's voice. Uh, and as the dragon goes to attack the city, like the golem larger than the city itself almost like rises up and grabs the dragon. Uh, and the dragon just, are you a god? Just, no! No! <laughs> Yes! <laughs> uh, and that's one of my favorite things in this game. Oh, oh shit. Jeremy? Um, I don't know, man. It's like, this campaign was full of plans and not plans and just you guys playing in the moment and just doing what you want to do. One of the things I loved so much about it being the free form system that it was, right? is there wasn't any archetype you had to be, right? You didn't have to be yeah. an illusionist, as Dungeons & Dragons says an illusion illusionist is. Illusionist is. You know, you didn't have to be a druid, as D&D says a druid is. You didn't have to be a fighter, as D &D, or an eldritch knight, as D&D says an eldritch knight is. Uh, and, like, I think... That's what I loved so much about this. Even though there definitely were like big archetypes y'all followed. Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to your characters. To. Well, of course, right? You did it in your own ways that like really felt super unique and I don't know. It was fun. It was just fun telling this story together, right? Yeah. But I had no idea 90% of the shit you guys were going to do, but you uh, did it. I think I think the other big thing for me with this campaign hey, was the character creation process, right? Like it was it was in a way like we we dicked around with it a lot, but it was still like personal because we didn't have a list of things to choose from. Like I didn't go onto 5e yeah. tools like a day before playing and be like, ah, "I guess I'm just going to slap some stuff together, roll some dice, boom." You know, we we just sat down and we we're like, "What do you as a player want to do?" And you can do basically anything. Yeah, you know, it was it was super fun. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I agree. I like that it's, so much. It's that was my reason, big thing. It's probably yeah. one of the reasons why I fell over <laughs> trying to fight Brutus. Because <laughs> I was right? just so I was just so invested in all these characters. Right, and that's and that's the thing is like, oh, uh, Matt was here. Today, Isn't like it this... weird to think? Is the <sighs> idea that Matt would talk talk to Pete out of game because he had literally been dreaming about their character's backstory, right? Like, isn't it weird to think that Ulysses is pretty much ten years younger than us? And yeah, that was the um, yeah. that was the the statement in full was, isn't it weird to think that when you and I were just getting started at the academy, Ulysses was only a baby? And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, and my thought wasn't just like, how deep in are you, man? It was yeah, that it was is like, yeah, weird. that is kind of weird. And it's like, how deep in am I? Yeah. I think I think all of us throughout this campaign at least one time had a dream about the campaign. Oh yeah. And actually I wanna just take back what I just said. It wasn't that. That wasn't my favorite part about it. My favorite part about this campaign was finishing like a four hour session. Well, actually two things. One, Pete, the fact that you learned to like wine, you and Matt learned to like wine oh, because yeah. you made it a character trait that your characters like wine. So you yeah. bought a bottle of wine to share when you guys played. Matt still drinks wine yeah. to this day. And yeah, you made your, Yeah. And you learned to like wine and to appreciate wine because that was number one. Number two was we just finished like a six hour session of like, let's micromanage the town because that's what you guys wanted to do and it was fun. And then we're like, all right, we're done. So Matt turns on Hearthstone. We're all sitting in the living room, a common room eating, uh, you know, eating wings or and watching, you know, backseating Hearthstone and talking about Dungeons and Dragons for the next four hours. You know, uh, like, effectively we're everything done we just played. Session, but let's talk about the session for the next four hours. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, like that, those this, eleven hour Saturdays were pretty good. Uh, this, and it's just this campaign the campaign just consumed our lives for senior year. Oh yeah, uh, first first semester, yeah, first and, and semester, it was yeah. it was just uh, the the serendipity of all of us being in the same place and having an outrageous amount of free time. It's like the kind of thing that even if we like played another campaign in the same setting, we just wouldn't have the circumstances that allowed it to exist again, just going on in our lives. I think yeah, yeah in the same way. Yeah, but yeah. I uh yeah this this campaign was special G -G. fucking rad gg good memories yeah, this this campaign um, was special i don't think there's ever going to be one to to match it just because of the way like you said the circumstances were yeah. absolutely perfect this is just oh, the yeah. uh the perfect storm so to speak but yeah. uh with that i think that's going to wrap up uh, this episode <laughs> this very very long episode of dnd time talks uh I, sorry we went so long. This show's supposed to be a tight hour, uh, and thank you to I everyone mean, who... I don't think anyone's ever mad if we go long. I don't like... think so either, but I do still want to say, like, if you were like, well, I really wanted to watch exactly one hour, then I'm sorry. But we went long today, and I had a lot of fun talking about this with you guys. It's always yeah. good reliving I, these I uh, love, crucible memories. I, I love talking about this campaign. I think yeah. it's, it's something that we do every single time we get together to see each other. Is just, we really man, do. Crucible is great. We had a god. His name was Jeremy. <laughs> and we deemed him fool's years fan. Ago. Yeah. Um, so, normally we'd move on to this segment. Oh, actually, I think we can still do it. Uh, we'd do our new Ask Pete and Jeremy segment. Uh, there was just one question in here. <laughs> Boo! We should, just, we should make that sound bite and just play it whenever uh, we move on. To uh, I will do that before the next talks. Um, so... <laughs> The <laughs> ask Pete and Jeremy. Uh, no, there's only um, there's only two. Uh, we're actually I have three questions here. Uh, the first two are what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow, and then the next question after it uh, that was from Rex. The next question after it was Mr. Plunderloot, a European swallow or an African swallow. Um, Jeremy, would you care to handle this one? No. All right, our next question. Uh, they're pretty uh, fit. They're pretty quick. Yeah. Know, what do you think, Kyle? My... Pretty quick. Yes. Wait, no. uh, it depends. It does it grasp the coconut by the husk? Oh, true. That... Mm. Can it grasp the coconut? I think by we're I think we're husk? lacking more information here. We need to know if it's grasping coconut by the husk or not. And my secondary question, uh, the secondary question there: European or African swallow? I'm going to go with African swallow. Uh, and then uh, the next question uh, from Vbunny23: uh, So has Ravnica been confirmed as good for D and D time, and can the backgrounds be allowed so long that they do not include the spells? Specifically, the one that has to do with the cult, because that one specifically has nothing broken, overpowered, or inherently bad about it that makes it more or less powerful than a standard background. And if not, can you go over the backgrounds and make your version of them in the next brews? Uh, one's appropriate and approved for D&D &D time. Um, so, do you want to start, Jeremy? Would you like me to? I think I got this one in the bag. Very well, take it away. So, backgrounds in 5th edition D&D &D are not mechanically impactful. They'll give you like a skill proficiency, maybe a language, maybe a tool proficiency, a couple of little things here and there. Um, and so with these backgrounds, we there's a lot we'd have to take out. And that's just not something we're in the interest of doing. Most of these backgrounds, you can reflavor an existing thing to get yeah. the right idea. You can come up with your own totally unique background for your character and just take the mechanics from some existing background to represent it. Yep, All of those things are perfectly yeah. fine for D and D time. And no, we're not going to to accept any of the backgrounds from Ravnica because there's just too much of saying, well, it's this but X, you know, and yeah. it just gets complicated, and that's not what we're doing here. Uh, we really like to do things wholesale, um, you know, just as we were very strongly considering with the races of not allowing the Simic hybrid. Uh, and we were thinking, oh, well, you can ban this one, but we don't want to just have one race banned. We want to just be able to say, we, yeah. you know, all of the races from Ravnica are allowed. So that's what we did, but we decided not to do the background. So I don't think we're going to change that. Yeah. Um, so next question uh, from Crowley. What is a schnurbel? Also, did I spell it right? The way it was spelled was S-C-H-N-U-R-B-L-E. Ah, uh, no. C. Crowley, uh, Schnurble is spelt uh, S-H-N-U-R-B-L-E, Schnurble. 
Uh, a schnurbel is uh, one regular pearl hot dog. That is an eighth pound hot dog with uh, two pieces of chorizo inside a large sub roll with uh, uh, the special condiments of mayo, our homemade sweet cabbage, and our special sriracha baba sauce. That's a mixture of sriracha, barbecue, and proprietary secrets. You combine this all together, you create the schnurbel, the best tasting sandwich on the East Coast. Come out and try it. Fred's Frank's on Wakefield, uh, on, on Lake Quantapow in Lakefield. Uh, off of exit 40 on I-95, you go around the rotary, you see it, can't miss it, all right? You'll smell the smoke, it'll hook you in from the highway, you know, like the old cartoons where it just kind of grabs you by the nose and pulls you in, just Don't like that. that. There you can't go. confirm, they're delicious. And we had a last-minute question uh, from D Forgotten One. Can we have random interviews between Watt Roger and random Mythtier adventurers uh, for some silly streams? Um, the answer is probably not, um, just because of the amount of time that we have. I've that seen sounds, a lot of characters have started putting some cool stuff in the roleplay channel on D&D Time, talking about how their characters have been reacting to the events in the Crimson Coast, which is just, I think that's neat, actually. Yeah, so I do So that well. might be the place for it, and maybe we could do that kind of stuff uh, there. Um, but at the moment, I just, I do not have time to put another uh, stream together yet. But I'll say, I can definitely picture, like... <laughs> Just um, chatting. You're chatting with Roger now on our late night radio talk show, uh, and you know him bringing on guests and stuff. It would be very funny. I like the idea, although uh, maybe in the future, the who knows? Yeah, perhaps not in the cards at the moment, but I do like the I feel idea. Like that's a better podcast idea. Um, well, maybe, then it's just welcome to the Magic Tap. Yeah, then we're yeah, hello from the Magic. Different. Hello from the Magic, Roger. Um, and. <laughs> Uh, that's it. That's all my questions. Not, uh, not many this week. A uh, reminder, if you want to ask questions, usually um, we'll be talking more about uh, directly like DMing and stuff in game. Uh, and if you have questions like that, or just anything like some of those were silly, uh, ask them in the Ask Pete and Jeremy channel, which is on our Everyone Discord, arms in the air which is Peter. linked below. I was holding my arms in the air for the big payoff when they come down and I point downwards to where the Discord channel is. Hey, but I'm in the oh, Discord okay. where you're pointing now, so I have to point, all right? Because right now you're just pointing at me. Um, and with that, um, that's... <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, oh you're, boy. You're, you're, Hang you're on. Correct. Jeremy, Jeremy's having some technical difficulties. Oh, uh, it would appear so. Are we still oh, being boy. able to be heard? Oh, oh nope. Uh, still able to okay, be heard. we're back. Um, right. Looks like you guys are still there, but I died for a second. Yeah, yeah. Right with that one. Uh, Farful, why did you use Join two fingers Discord. on one hand and one finger on the other when you pointed, Pete? Uh, Eldritch Mystery. Uh, and with that, uh, coming up on Friday, we have Pete and Jeremy's D&D time as pair of the usual. Uh, and then on Sunday, tune into D&D time brews. We're going to be doing some more magic items. Uh, both of those things will be fun, and I'm looking forward to them. Jeremy, do you have anything else you want to announce before we call it a night? No, actually, well, some people have been mentioning stuff about campaigns on the D&D Time channel, and that's something we're planning on looking into in the future. So stay tuned for more info about that as we uh, confirm some stuff. Indeed. Mm. Um, but, um, oh, I have, I have one last thing. Oh, what is it, Cal? If you have any problems <laughs> with anything <laughs> that we <laughs> talked about tonight, <laughs> anything that you, you feel that you need to vent about, and complain to someone at me on Twitter, Dangerous Bacon, where the S is a five. If it's anything good, keep it to yourself or, t or uh, tweet at uh, D&D Time. Well, Kyle, if I had a Twitter, I'd at you about betraying your family and, <laughs> oh, okay. uh, and sure sending your son off to die. Yeah, um, and then yeah. I'm pretty sure that I could just kill you. Uh, so are you guys not me as a person. Not me, Ulysses could definitely do. Oh uh, no, no, but Indy, Indy with with his last oh, no, bottles no, no, of shine. We're starting the fights again. We're, we're, we're doing, doing this again. again. Okay, okay, guys, 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 guys. <laughs> Kyle, James, are you guys familiar with our traditional sign off? Uh, kind of. Yeah. All right, you'll 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 figure it out. I think. Follow I'm Pete's Pete. lead. I'm Pete. And I'm James. And I'm Kyle. And I'm Jeremy. And this and is this is D and D, 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 D talks. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Goodbye. The least in sync will ever be.